All right, it's go time. Go time. Go time. <laughs> okay, well, we're here. Uh, done, done. Let's get into Age of Wonders 4. I mean, what are we waiting for? I, the only thing that I did is I set graphics on Ultra and I've turned the game sound all bit down. That's it. So let's experience the game together for the first time. It gives me the impression that there's a lot of chaos going on, and we're about to set participate in such chaos. Okay, my pantheon. Uh, edit pantheon name. I didn't really think of a name for the pantheons. Of course I didn't. Um, let's call them the... Hmm... Astral Conclave. Hmm, no. Celestial Council. There we go. Alright, let's see. Progression. I have no idea what I'm doing here. It's locked, so I don't. There's no need for me to read what's over there. Okay, uh, info, encyclopedia. Went through settings, the Dragon Patriots, nah, man. I'm just gonna be fine. I guess I'm gonna go new game. Your destination. So choose your destination, create a realm of your own. Okay. Feel the rebirth, initiation realm, beginner scenario. The returning wizard kings first preyed on small, bountiful, and harmonic realms to hone their skills. Will you be a protector or invader of this beautiful do domain? Or, okay, Wizard Kings. Uh, Wizard Kings are ancient archmages who seek power across the realms of the Astral Sea. Before joining the Pantheon at Mage Haven, the Torment of Shadows left many mentally warped. Wizard Kings are no longer limited to their original mortal form and can create people vastly different from themselves. A Pantheon. With many Wizard Kings seeing themselves as living gods, it is no surprise their gathering in Magehaven became known as the Pantheon. In this century, the members of the Pantheon debate and scheme to alter the fate of the cosmos. The Pantheon consists of many factions and alliances of which the Covenant and Shadre are most prominent. Okay. I, I love the tooltip within tooltip with little tooltip. Magehaven. Magehaven is a world in the Astral Sea where the Pantheon of Godir hold their most important forum of dispute and counsel. It is protected by an unbreakable spell which prevents any harm from being done to a living creature or soul. Therefore, even the fiercest enemies can meet there to negotiate their conflicts. Magehaven is located close to the well and bears remnants of the Archons who once dwelt there. Among the many wonders of Magehaven are the Library of Ancient Tomes and the World Gate, which act as magic portals through the Astral Sea. So the Godir are the wizards of the Pantheon who gather in Magehaven are called Godir. From there they seek new knowledge and journey to new realms. Okay. Some of the Godir are newly ascended champions, while others are ancient wizard kings seeking dominion over new realms and people through their dominion of the Affinities. Godir have achieved a form of immortality. If they're vanquished, they're cast into the Astral Void and seek to rematerialize in Magehaven. Okay. 
Oh, what's the torment of shadows? In the darkness of the astral void, the banished wizards are tormented by visions and maddening voices. Survivors describe vastly different experiences as if the cosmos creates a reckoning for a wizard's individual actions and beliefs. Those that succumb are doomed to drift forever as some lost wizards, mad husks of which little remains other than their lust for power. Uh, okay, so practically they were banished in hell. In a personally shaped hell. Harmonious lands. This realm is more peaceful, but still not without danger. High tier ancient wonders are absent. High tier infestation spawners are absent. Okay. The second one is a story realm. Rise of the Godir. As an ascended champion, build up a new home for your wandering tribe in the myth mythical valley of wonders on Atla. Prepare yourself for the clash with the returning wizard kings of old and rise in power to claim a great destiny. Atla is one of the oldest worlds within the Astral Sea. Uh, by the way, guys, you hear? are you hearing me correctly? Are you fine? Or is the music of the game too loud and I should bring it down a notch? So, Atla is one of the oldest worlds within the Astral Sea with a potent convergence of astral flows. It is home to the Valley of Wonders and Inyok's Court. Oh, the High Elf Court. Okay. Through the ages, Atla has played a pivotal role in the events that shaped the cosmos, be it as a realm to conquer, a scene of cosmic battles, or the origin of powerful beings. Many known Godir originate from this world. Sure, I'll bring the sound a little bit further down. I'll bring it a 10% down, that's fine. There we go. Okay, so back to new game. I don't think I'm gonna go with the beginner scenario. I think I'm gonna go with the directly with the Rise of the Go Deer because I I know how to play the game. I played Age of Wonders three. I've played uh, Age of Wonders Planetfall, and I've seen some of the developer streams. So I think I have a, a good idea of what the hell I'm doing. Uh, so let's go with this these guys. As a mortal champion, build up a new home for for your wandering tribe in the mythical Valley of Wonders. Prepare yourself for the clash with the returning wizard kings of old and rise in power to claim greater destiny. It says that I should play on... I want a forgiving experience with easy to overcome challenges. I know strategy games give it to me straight. I know strategy games give it to me straight. We're going to go with that one. Chris, uh, let's see what this planet has going for it. So, Crystalina... Crystalline Abundance. Mana crystals grow more easily on this roll, making them unusually abundant. Mana resource nodes and pickups are abundant. Okay, that's kind of giving me an idea that I should play a mage. Or a caster, or a summoner-focused character. Uninhabitable Underground. Realm has unusually small, unwelcoming caverns. The underground is smaller. No throne city can be placed underground. Okay, so it's just for exploration and small rewards. Got it. And Ancient Ruins. There are ruins of the ancient elven court to be found on this realm. They can be rebuilt to found new cities. Alright, cool. Let's get in there. Here, you have the unique ability to create your empire and the people living in it. Whether they are deep dwarves, mystic elves, or barbarian halflings, they all make excellent followers. As your empire grows, you acquire new tomes of magic, allowing you to evolve your people into the direction you want, be it angelic beings, undead, or other transcendent forms. This Age of Wonders will be yours. I don't think I'm going to be creating my own faction. I think I'm going to be selecting one of the ones from the library. So let's see what we got going for it, at least for this mission. So we got a fateful... Fateful Tigrans, Eric Rex. He starts off with the Tome of Zeal. Uh, Faithful Tigrans, I should check. So they're feline, yeah. Uh, resolute. Units can, move, uh, can more easily resist enemies that use a lot of status effects. So negative status effect lasts less, uh, one less turn with a minimum of one turn. Okay, so they suffer less from status effects. Adaptable. Uh, units grow strong at a faster rate from winning fights, so extra 30 experience. They have the high culture. Structures have city stability and knowledge. Income units are strengthened with awakened, revealing their hidden potential. Plus 10 alignment. What's Awakened? Ah, uh, plus four spirit damage on base attacks. Ooh, okay, that's cool. Imperialist. They're focused on the glory of their empire and the development of their cities. The Throne City and uh, cities that share a border with a Throne City gain a 20, uh, plus 20 city stability and 20 gold income. And the capital city starts with plus one population right off the bat, so you can get a little bit of a head start. You can get an extra 
region. Great builders, they form a society of builders, okay. Quarries yield uh, plus two gold, and special province improvements cost less production, so you, they build them faster. Starting equipment, a horse. Hey, Gova, uh, checking out uh, Age of Wonders 4. So they have order and in materium affinity, or is it industrious or something like that? I think so. What does the Tome of Zeal give them? Um, rile up your fanatic population for a common goal. Use units with zeal and inflict condemn on enemies. Okay. All right, so they're practically diplomatic, zealous, high and mighty type of characters. All right, let's see. Alfred Elderstone, Destined Humans, Order, Nature, and Materium, the Tome of Faith. Oh, so practically, these guys have the Tome of Zeal, and the opposite of the Tome of Zeal is the Tome of Faith. These focus on healing and uh, resisting. Hey, Zegrid. Uh, healing and resistances, I think. Destined Humans, uh, what do they have? Fast recuperation. Armies can fight longer on the world map. They regenerate an additional 5 HP. Okay, um, on the world map. Uh, and they have extra experience. They're feudal based, so they have um, medieval units. And structures with food income units benefit from close formation with stand together. Chosen uniters gain 20% income from vassals, plus 10 uh, good alignment. Shield units and polearm units have a plus one rank. Oh, that's kind of cool. And you start off with an extra shield unit or a polearm unit, and you have a diplomatic focus. So practically, you want to make as many other cities vassals as possible, and you start off with more of a defensive position. Uh, great builders, their quarries are also good. Start off with a lance and a horse. First elves. Uh, nature, order, and a little bit of astral focus. Tome of Beasts, that's kind of yelling mage at me. They have keen sighted. Range shots hit more often. 20% accuracy on physical range and magical attacks. Ooh, works very well for a caster. Well, either for a range focus or a caster focused faction. Arcane focus. Um, magic attacks deal extra damage. They have, they have the same culture as the Tigrans, so they have the... High culture. The, practically, the culture determines the racial units that you're going to be having at the beginning of the game. Well, well on the course of the game. Ancient Wise Ones. Uh, when a tome is unlocked, a random skill from that tome costs less than 60% um, less knowledge. And one random research skill is unlocked already, okay? And Adept Settlers, plus one city cap. Founding cities cost less um, Imperium. And newly founded cities gained one extra population. No, that's kind of cool. You start off with a staff of spirits. So kind of like a support. Okay. The Because this place has an abundance of mana crystals and mana nodes, I'm thinking of going for a spellcaster. Uh, but let's go through all of them just out of curiosity. Why are these ones grayed out, though? That's a bit weird. I'll need to check that out. Uh, then what do we got here? Bloodfang Orcs. Chaos and nature focused. They have the Tome of the Horde, so a lot of uh, powerful low-tier units amass a large force. Uh, Orcoid, strong, ferocious. Increase physical damage of melee and range units. And deals 40% extra damage via retaliation attacks and attacks of opportunity. Okay, so practically get in their face and uh, just start smashing. Barbarians start with food and draft. Melee units have primal strike, dealing extra damage on the first strike in combat. Rootless raiders, fabled hunters. So rootless raiders practically, um, near city owned gains plus three gold and plus three draft per tier of units killed after successful combat. But this one, uh, gain 100% resources from clearing an infestation, ancient wonders, or resource nodes, and arranged units and skirmisher units have plus one rank, and you start off with an extra ranged unit. That's cool, but we're barbarians. Aren't we focused on melee units? Yeah, they have the barbarian uh, culture, I think, yeah. Ritual of Alacrity, all right. Then we got Tugram Hammerhall, Mountain Dwarves, uh, Tome of Rock, they have uh, materium and nature focus. They ha they're industrious. 
tough, super mega resistant, ad adept settlers. Yeah, super mega resistant. They're just your typical dwarves. All right, Arcane Tigran. Enamuru and Kahanan. Tome of Warding. Feline Resolute. Um, so extra resistances. Desert Adaptation. I don't think this is a desert world. Mana Chandler. Summoning spells cost 50% less mana to cast. Magic Origin units have plus one rank. Ooh, that would be great here. We can amass a large uh, summoned force. And they have the Mystic Culture. Units have attunement star blades, making them stronger when a spell is cast in battle. And Shadow Walkers. Cities and provinces have plus two vision range. Scout units have universal camouflage, so they're invisible. Outposts start with the Watchtower upgrade built. Wayfinder enchantment is already active and costs no upkeep. Okay, so we are practically better at scouting. Ham Binger, the boy. Wholesome halflings. He starts off with the Tome of Roots, so that's kiting. Uh, he has a feudal culture. 30% harder to hit by ranged attacks. I'm gonna, for the first scenario, I'm gonna go with a pre built faction. That's why I'm going through all of them. For the first scenario, devotees of good. Okay. Ham bringer. I'm sure he also brings the ham to the fight. Necrotic Goblins. Gloom Hook Nail. He starts off with the Tome of Souls. Okay, so we have uh, Necromancy in the base game. That's great. Fast Recuperation. They are Shadow and Chaos focused. Uh, regeneration. Sneaky. 25% damage on flanking attacks. That's cool. They have the Dark Culture. Uh, cities can negate city stability and income penalty. Uh, unique city structures granting knowledge. Units specialize in inflicting negative status. Rootless Raider, Science of Evil, so they're all about killing. Then we got the Skaven. Ah, okay, it's, it's the Rodents. It's the um, Ratkin, or they're called. Uh, Tome of Horde, Barbarian. Yeah, Tome of Horde, Barbarian. Practically similar to the Bloodfang Orcs of further above evil. So why can't I select these guys? Wizard King. Oh, it's because I can only play with champions. I can't play with Wizard Kings. Okay. Uh, <laughs> these are Deep Dwellers. Molekin. Mashara the Radiant. Human Paladin. Imperialist. Cursed Toadling. Feudal. Alright. I think out of all of them, the Arcane... The Arcane Tiger in Inamru and Kahanan sounded very interesting, especially since there's a lot of mana nodes. Now, there's also something regarding the mana nodes. Those mana nodes could be used just to focus on enhancing the troops, so it's perfectly fine to play in a more traditional uh, melee-focused uh, faction, but I think a lot of people are going to be doing that. So let's go with a Spellcaster, and we're going to start with Inamru and Kahan, and we'll see what's going on. So select this. Uh, wait, can I edit an already existing fashion? Steps you will create your people, followed by your ruler. For your first fashion, we suggest you focus on theme instead of the numbers. Roleplay your favorite trope. Okay, got it. I'm not gonna modify. Starts here. We're gonna go with Enamru Enkahanan, and I guess I'm gonna mention in the stream name. Uh, Astral. Let me see the exact information. There we go. So it's going to be... Astral, or actually... Mystic Tigrans. Mystic Tigran Summoner. There. Just so people who are looking at the stream title, they know what I'm playing. Okay, so... Enamru Enkahan. Enna? I guess I'm gonna call her Enna. Rise of the Godier, Valley of Wonders. It was the time when the raw forces of magic returned to Athla. The seal that had protected the world was shattered. The cosmic currents thereby unleashed shaped the land. 
changing what was, whilst returning what once may have been. In the wake of this new genesis, the great empires of the Third Age fell into decline, bringing on an era of re-exploration and expansion. So, I expect, thanks for resubbing. Uh, so practically, uh, what they're saying is, all of the events in Age of Wonders 3 are retconned. <laughs> practically, uh, all of the factions... All of the factions uh, within... Within Age of Wonders 3 have just been wiped out, and now we're just starting from scratch. Uh, you're going to kill a man, you're uh, in a reno, okay. I'm not following, my man. You good? Alas, the time for peaceful discovery was brief. For the ancient wizards of the Second Age broke free from their eldritch prisons in the depths of the Astral Sea. Their strength regained, they set out to rule over the surviving peoples as God Kings or Godia. I see. So practically, this is. I think from Age of Wonders 2. Oh my god, you're gonna make me go play Age of Wonders 2. <laughs> there was little divine about them. Yaka, Nimue, Carissa. A pantheon of pretender gods. They were scarred, corrupted, haunted by millennia of torment, and ready to unleash their newfound powers against whoever dared stand in their way. Okay. Yet the wizard kings were not unchallenged. Mortal champions rose to the defense of their people, rebuilding their realms and learning to channel the currents of magic. And I guess one of the pioneers in this regards will be Enna. This is the story of one such champion. While traveling through the Valley of Wonders in search of a new home, tragedy befell her tribe, its elder slain by a magical being. After inheriting both the elder's throne and their powerful tome of magic, the young champion had to rise up and protect her people from the dangers that awaited. All right. I guess it's 2023, I am identifying myself as a female Tigran, and you guys need to respect that. Or my feelings will be hurt. Enamru Enkhanan. A new ruler emerges. Explore your surroundings and expand your domain. Prepare to face your rivals and become the master of this realm. Your choices will shape the new Age of Wonders. So we have a little bit of astral, a little bit of shadow focused. Okay. That's cool. It's a little bit on the dark side. We'll see. Maybe we're just going to go pure shadow. Those are some big ass eyes. Okay. Arcane Tigrans. Specialize in magic that protects your units from damage and retaliates against enemies that attack you. Okay, I guess uh, that practically will bypass the squishiness of the of the units a little bit. The world does not care about your feelings, you butterfly son of a bitch! Okay. Mana Chandler Shadow Walker. Okay. We need to decide on our starting magic. Mark of invulnerability. Let's see. Oh, wait. These are... That, no, though these are our starting magic. We don't have to decide yet. All right, so what do we got? A uh, buff spell. Becomes invulnerable for one turn. Has their negative status effect removed. Cannot be used on a unit more than once per battle. Invulnerable. Immune to all damage. Okay. Uh, can I still attack? So practically, can I just put somebody in the middle of the enemy and just uh, set invulnerability on him? I guess that this is also a good way of saving somebody from dying. Cosmic Ablation. Target unit sustains 10 lightning damage, 10 fire, and 10 frost. Whoo! Oh boy, that's a lot of damage. 30 damage right off the bat? I think I think uh, Stone Shot just does around 15 or 20. And Wayfinder Enchantment. Grants enchanted units very fast movement, and it only affects scouts. Okay. A new dawn. 
We need to slay three units and build a farm. Long have the arcane tigrans wandered Atla as exiles. O high matriarch Enamu, Enamru Enkahan, by leading them to this valley, you have returned to them their hope. The proud city of Nebular Sanctum represents a new beginning for your people. They're eager to stride beyond the city gates and claim the surrounding lands as their own. To expand your domain, hunt down the creatures near Nebular Sanctum and grow new population to place your first farm. Okay, so uh, we're going to be receiving city stability for this quest and a mystery bonus. Let this journey of us, tiger of us arcane tigrans begin. Age of Wonders dawns. Allow me to lend some aid, O oh High Matriarch. During play, messages like this will provide advice on how to achieve victory on this realm. Some of these will trigger objectives for your growing empire. Click on the question mark button on the bottom right to open additional advice. Okay. Take some time to look around and familiarize. Uh, okay, rotate camera, reset rotation, that's fine. You can take a closer look at the land by zooming in, or get a better overview of the world by zooming out. Zoom mm. out far enough to reach the overview map. So I guess I'm still getting the, uh, I'm still getting the, the tutorial experience, even though I'm in this story scenario. You have reached the overview map. As you explore the world, you will have many threats and opportunities to consider. Use this to inform your strategies. I always loved the um, the map like the map looking overview map. Uh, you know, practically a classic map. I wish I wish they would have gone further and made the icons uh, scribbles. So practically more similar to Age of Wonders three. Really would have liked that. Okay, zoom back in. Advice. I'm um, okay. I'm okay for. I'm. Sh I totally got this. I totally got this. Okay, so from the looking at the UI, it's very similar to uh, Age of Wonders Planetfall, where you have your research and your empire research over in the top left corner. Practically, um, in in uh, Planetfall, you had combat research and then social research and this time we just have uh just normal combat research plus um empire development which will be available in two turns diplomatic overview uh, so we have two other factions on the map we don't know any free cities we only know our race military ranking we don't know anything okay quests we got the victory condition and then we have the pantheon quests got it Hero overview: a list with all of our heroes, all of our all of the enemy heroes that we have in prison, and all of the dead heroes that we kill that are in the crypt. Good. And what's this? Magic materials: arcanium ore, focus crystal, fireforge stone. Okay, so ores, liquids, plants. So there's uh, nine special resources that we can mine or harvest. Ores. Ring, wait, collection effect, ring, rings of binding. Heroes, okay, so if I harvest all of those three ores, I gain the effect rings of binding, which gives heroes plus one defense, plus one resistance, plus ten bonus damage. Okay. And then these individually also have an effect? Oh, yeah, yeah, they do. Unique global effect. Hurry recruitment for units is 25% cheaper. Focus crystal. Units gain uh, more experience. Unique global effect. Units cost 20% less draft. So practically draft is um, your stat that's utilized to rush out units. So in Age of Wonders you utilize production uh, to bring out units. In Age of Wonders 3 and in Planetfall you utilize production to bring out units. Now they separated that and production is only used for building buildings. And now draft is specifically used for um, recruiting new units. Okay, liquid. Uh, mana resource nodes grant 10 knowledge and mana. Okay, oh, 10 knowledge and 10 mana, I would assume. Archon of Lun, Astral Dew, Drunk of Liquid. We would, like, we would want to focus on liquids. Plants, Imperial Essence, 10 Imperium income. Imperium is also very, very um, valuable. Haste berries, founding and migrating, okay. 
Whispering Stones, Grand Extra Allegiance, so more of a diplomacy focus, but Imperium is also going to be very, very useful. Okay, so that's done. What else we have here? City Overview. Oh, I love this. I love this. It was very useful in Planetfall. I'm glad they kept it here. Practically, it's an easy way for you to see a summary of all of your cities because, well, at least the Planetfall, uh, you would gain a lot, or, or and, and in Age of Wonders 3, you would gain a lot of cities, so having a list to easily look what they're doing and what they're specialized in is great. Armies list, that's great. Do we have, um... You have selected an army. Armies are the core of your military strength. They can explore the world, attack your foes, and defend your lands. Banner of each army shows what faction do you belong to. The Battle of the Mano gives you information about the army. army. is made up of individual units. You can see a unit's tier, unit role, and movement points in the army panel. Okay. Your armies can move oh a limited distance every turn. The distance they can move depends on the terrain they traverse. Cool. You are about oh boy. to begin exploring your surroundings. While the wide world holds plenty of things to find, two of the most valuable places you can come across are free cities and ancient wonders. Yeah, free cities because we can integrate them in the kingdom in one way or another, either through diplomacy or through force. And ancient wonders are practically special resource nodes that you need to clear and then um, annex to your uh, faction. Which is fine, but no, I actually wanted to just check my units a little bit and see what we got going for us. Okay, so that's armies, and then we also have Rally of the Lieges, which, as I understand, if you have a vassal, so if you vassalized a free city, the Rally of the Legions button will become a Legions button will become available, and it's going to allow you to recruit troops. Hey, Gilf, what's up, man? Okay, so that was that side. Show hide mini map. Economic overview. Okay, so that's practically showing me the regions around my city. Estrelonium, a city to the south. They haven't seen me yet. I haven't seen them. I'm probably going to be sending a scout down there to see what's up. Uh, what's this? A mana stash. Small pickup. It's going to give me mana. Mana. Um, iron deposit gives me extra production. Actually, I should check the economic overview a little bit. So what do we got in the area? We got... Okay, so I can already build a conduit over there, which is going to be great. I'm probably going to be rushing towards that. So I think... What else do we got up in here? Over here we got a gold vein, right? Yeah. And then we have a gold vein quarry... Forester farm... And then further, deeper forces. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, we're just starting this game, indeed. It's, I'm practically looking to see... Ooh, there's something there. You have selected a magic material. These have various unique effects if acquired via annexation or through trade. Gathering all materials from a category will yield a powerful empire-wide bonus. Indeed. Okay, so, yeah, definitely I want to expand the city in the southeast as uh, fast as possible. Practically, I want... Ashley. So, the focus would be... You have encountered a resource node. Yes. They provide additional yield to the province they are located in. Indeed. Nodes are often occupied by marauders. To claim the node... Indeed. Okay, yeah, I practically need to clear out the marauders in the area for me to build upon it and benefit from the resource node. Alright, mana node. This is the reason why we want to build a conduit over there. That's practically going to be sustaining our summoned armies. So I think the idea will be I'll need the quarry, I'll need the gold vein, I'll need the mana node, and I'll need the tranquility pool. I think that's going to be how we're going to be expanding the city. Now, the problem is the region with the Tranquility Pool is three tiles away. We can only annex two tiles at the with a, with a level one city. So we're going to have to upgrade the city first. F for us to upgrade, we will need food and we will need uh, money. So I think for starters, I am actually going to go for the Gold Vein and for the Iron Deposit. 
Let's see. Gold vein. Do I have any bonuses from farms? Build a farm. Because it's near a river, it's giving us a two extra food, which is awesome. We're still going to be gaining gold from the gold vein. If I build a mine... Okay, so practically it benefits me to just go for a farm. Over here, we got um, the um, iron deposit. So let's see. Five. The forester is going to give me a two and a three. Uh, two food, a three production. Quarry is going to give me a five and a mine. Okay, so I think I'm going to be building a quarry there, because if I remember correctly, to build mage towers, you require actually a lot of stone. So having a quarry is going to get uh, is going to boost that a bit. So I think I'm, what I'm going to do is this location, um, bam, bam, here, which is probably just going to be a farmer or a forester, and then reach the goodies that are going to be boosting my mana. Okay. You've selected one of your cities. Cities are central to your economy and allow you to build more units for your armies. Uh, food draft and production are resources used to develop your city, so that's why I want to focus on those first. Gold, mana, imperium, and knowledge are resources that can be spent on any city units or spells, which is fine. We want an early, more powerful economy. Locations and province improvements located in a city's domain will provide you with income. Structures can be built to improve your city. Indeed. Select the hammer button located. Okay, suggestion build a storehouse or a workshop. Okay. So this is our population. Um, as we gain food, population is going to grow. Um, so let's see, what are the what are the limits? So in three turns, this location is going to grow. Uh, we are currently producing 44 food per turn. Uh, to reach the next level, we need to go 120. Something that I'm going to want to verify is, does the uh, food overflow uh, bleed into the next uh, tur into the next population uh, tick? And that's going to be something that I want to verify, because 44 plus 44 is going to be 88, and uh, f uh, 88 plus uh, 44 is going to be 132. So, um, I want to see if the extra 12 food will go towards the next pop. We'll see. We'll find that out. Okay, then we got the uh, building queue, and then here, over here, is the um, unit, uh, the um, military queue, the units queue. Um, but, 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 but city stability is fine. City information. I'm okay. I'm not going to automate. I am going to be... I am going to be, um, what's the word? Micromanaging everything because I'm a goddamn schnitzel buff. Uh, whispering so to the city, this will passively improve your city's stability by two per turn up to a maximum bonus of 20. I'm going to be doing that later on in the late game when we have stability problems. Because as the population of the city will grow, we will gain uh, um, city instability. So they're not really going to be super mega happy about it. Uh, plus, the Whispering Stones are used to increase relations with uh, free cities. So that's going to be needed for us. Okay, uh, let's check, check check what buildings we can make. So Evocator's Abode. Plus 5 mana, plus 10 draft, plus 5 production. And it unlocks Stone Conjurer and Blacksmith. I wonder if this is a unique building to... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Cancel that. Cities also recruit your I know, I know. Um, I want to ver- I wonder if this is a, um, mystic, uh, building. Specifically for this race. Uh, it will unlock Stone Conjurer, Masonic Hall, Extra Draft for the Blacksmith, can it be boosted? Yeah, it can be boosted if I build a farm. So practically, it makes the uh, building cheaper. And I think the first thing we're going to be going for is going to be a farm. Uh, library is going to be giving us extra knowledge. Shrine is going to be giving us a extra mana. It's going to be boosted by a quarry. Library is going to be boosted by a forester. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to go farm, quarry, Forester, just so I can boost those, and then we're gonna have conduit and uh, probably another conduit over down there. We'll see. 
I know I know that I need to specialize, so we'll need to have a few extra um, resource buildings of the same type. Storehouse is going to be giving us extra 10 food, which is going to be bringing our uh, food production up to 54. Uh, that is not going to shave off uh, one turn off of the population, so that's kind of sucks. Town Hall, Mages Plaza. This unlocks the Soother and the Spell Shield. Okay. And also, if we if we uh, take this upgrade, we're going to be able to annex further regions. What the what does the vendor do? Uh, plus 10 extra gold, that's it, and it gives us market. Okay, that's fine. I think Evocator's Abode is going to be the way to... It's either Evocator's Abode or Storehouse... And I'm a little bit on the fence on the shrine, but I think since the first uh, building that we're going to be getting is going to be the... Well, okay, so now the other question would be, sh what should I focus on? Should I focus on food or should I focus on a little bit of a production early? I think I'm going to be focusing on both of these, but still. Hmm. Let's go... That's giving me mana, draft, and production. I could take this region, which is going to be giving me extra production, and I could go... Oh, no, no, the Forester is down here, so that's not going to boost it. Shrine, library... Okay, I guess I'm going to get the farm and uh, just boost the this. Should be fine. Plus seven. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. It's probably going to be the Evocator's abode. Uh, but I'm going to be selecting that... Ah, fuck it. Select it right now. Go for it. All right, what else do we got here? Let's check our units. So we got Arcane Guard, Arcanist, and Mystic Projection. Okay, so the Mystic Projection is a Scout unit, Battle Mage unit, Polearm unit. Okay, I guess now is a good time to uh, see what we have in our army. Lesser Tide Spirit, Mystic Projection. Let's let's check the. Do I right click you? you? Okay. Selected a unit and opened the unit panel. This panel shows the details on a unit and what the unit is capable of, as well as any weaknesses you could exploit. Yes, indeed. Okay, so the Mystic Projection is a scout unit. What do you have going for you? 45 HP. That's not a lot. <laughs> no defense. No resistance. Weak to lightning. Resistant to spirit damage. Uh, decent walking distance. Cosmic Bolts. Uh, these cause uh, three damage, but it's a repeatable attack, so it, it will attack three times. So it's nine damage in total. Uh, effects line of affected by line of sight rules cannot be used when within a enemy zone of control. So practically, obstacles can get in the way of the Cosmic Bolt. Can't use it when I'm next to an enemy. We got Defense Mode. Meh. Far Sight. Extra range. Pass through, can move through obstacles. Okay, universal camouflage, wayfinder enchantment. So, just typical scout. Not really going to be useful as a uh, a fighter. And interestingly enough, mystic projection. This this is not just this is not a actual dude being there. It's a mage from the city that's projecting himself and scouting that way. I like that. That's that's cool. All right, a lesser tide spirit. Ooh, I can rotate them. That's cool. Okay, so the slime. Tier 1 soldier fighter unit. 64 HP. Okay. Uh, one physical resistance to magical resistance neutral melee unit. Hello, Dazzle crew. Welcome, welcome. Things are nice and chill, and I'm taking my sweet time with the game. And... Teaching you guys some things, hopefully, if you don't already know stuff. Also, if you have any questions or you want to see certain aspects of the game, let me know. So what do we got here? Ooh, actually, I didn't check that. So he is ethereal. An ethereal unit will have two spirit resistance. You just got done downloading on Xbox here, and you're a new to Age of Wonders, so this should be fun. All right, cool, cool. Enjoy, my man. Enjoy your stay. If you have any questions, let me know. Pass through. Okay, so practically the benefit of this guy is he doesn't really have a lot of resistances, more physical resistance, but he is immune to a lot of effects. Bleeding, burning, diseased, frozen, immobilized, poisoned, and wet. You're a huge Civ player, so you like it better so far? I see. 
What do we got here? Floating. Moves through any type of terrain. Sand walk. Moving through sand costs fewer move points. And scout unit. Swift units are useful for exploring the world. All right. All right. All right. And then we got this dude who already has a tier, it seems. Melee strike. He's an elemental unit. Immunity to bleeding, poison, and disease. Got it. Evolve. This unit will transform into a more powerful unit when it reaches champion rank. I'm currently going uh, mage cats, actually. Mage cats with a little bit of ghost sprinkled on top. Hey, Skittle Twister, welcome back to the end. Actually, welcome to everyone. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, horrible shock weakness. Fire resistance, though, and uh, disease resistance. So, or plague, or blight. Okay, it's blight. That's cool. Evolve. So, practically, how the evolve works is once it reaches champion tier, it's going to evolve into a tied spirit. And that's a lesser tied spirit that's going to become a, a tied spirit. Doing good. Doing good. Chilling and enjoying the game. I'm fi I'm happy that I'm finally here to to play it. And it's finally out, practically. Okay, fighter unit. So what does... An outright melee unit with no obvious specialization or counters. Got it. Floating. Magic origin. Water camouflage. Okay. So, can... Does that mean that this unit can swim? Huh. How many tiers are there? Five. There are five tiers. Or are you talking about ranks, Balancero? But there are, there are tier... Uh, it goes up to tier five units, to my understanding. Okay. Oh, for ranks, uh, we have... Let's see. Uh, for ranks, we have one, two, three, four, five tiers as well. Uh, five rank tiers. So soldier, veteran, elite, champion. If you mouse over the tier of your soul, it will show its veterancy and it's going to show at each tier what they're going to be receiving. So to recruit, they don't receive anything, but once they're a soldier, they receive extra HP, veteran extra HP. So practically the four in that 64 over there is a reflection of its uh, it being a soldier rank. We will never reach legend with this character, because as soon as it reaches champion, it'll evolve into a tight spirit, which is going to take it back to recruit. I'm not exactly sure if the tight spirit evolves into anything else. Okay, do I actually have oh, summon? No. I know. <laughs> uh, we do have Wayfinder enchantment already active, which is going to be giving us a um, scouting boost. Tactical. Ah, uh, that's in, in combat. Got it. Um, okay, no other units there. What do we have in the other army? We have a tier 1, Arcanist, Arcane Guard, and a Soother. So let's check those guys out. So the Arcane Guard, they seem to be Polearm users. Yeah, Polearm unit. Uh, 65 HP, 1 defense, 2 resistance. Ah, a little bit low on that defense. That's going to be a bit interesting. Uh, melee Strike 12, Defense Mode. Attunement Star Blades. When a spell is cast, this unit's base attack randomly gains plus one fire damage, lightning damage, or frost damage for three turns, and it stacks up to three times. So I, I guess the idea is we want to cast spells before combat engages, or at least before this unit attacks. Charge resistance, so practically it's it's uh, practically it's count it's a counter against uh, cavalry. They do have first strike, so in theory, if with the with the first strike they kill the enemy before they get attacked, their low resistances shouldn't matter that much. Okay, and do they get anything interesting if they level up? So they gain HP, HP at elite status. They gain extra damage. And that legend metal to get retaliation or extra retaliation, maybe? Okay, so practically they're your typical uh, starter polearm anti cavalry defensive unit. Good. Arcanist. Battle Mage unit, Arcane Tigran. Okay, so the Arcanist has Cosmic Bolts, same as the Scout. She does have Attunement Starblade, so again, it's, it um, encourages that I cast spells first. And I guess this is our uh, basic ranged unit. What about the Soother? Soother support unit tier 2. 
Cosmic Blast. It's a 15 damage, but it's not a repeatable attack. You can tell by the one blip. One blip means uh, it can move three times and then also use Cosmic Blast for a quick shot. Kind of like a shotgun style, think of it like that. And then she has practically a repeater attack. Uh, you see the, the three blips. As she, she'll practically attack it, uh, with um, as many action points she has left. So if she has two action points, she's going to shoot two Cosmic Bolts. That would be the idea. In theory, if the enemy doesn't have any resistances, she has the potential of doing uh, 9 times 3, 27 damage. Which is nothing to scoff at. But she's a um, the Soother is a support unit. Let's see what she can do. So Soothing Breeze. Target friendly unit and another within two hexes. Heal plus 20 temporary HP. Okay, useful for our front line. Uh, defense mode waiting. Um, extends the zone of control to all adjacent hexes. Plus two defense, plus two resistance. Ooh, okay. She needs to be behind our uh, arcane guard. Okay, do you have anything of the sorts? Yeah, 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 yeah. She also, uh, the arcanist also has a defense mode. How about you? What's your defense mode? Okay, same defense mode. Got it. Okay, uh, the last unit that we want to check is, well, we also want to check the other racials, but we need to check our... You have hero. selected a hero. Heroes lead your armies around the world. Only they have the authority to explore ancient wonders, construct outposts, or start a siege. So they took the constructor unit from Age of Wonders 3, and they integrated into the heroes. They gave more roles to the heroes. That's how it works. Okay, what do we start off with? We start off with a lightning orb. Only your magical bolt at the target enemy. Uh, 10 damage repeatable attack, so the potential of doing 30 damage. We also have a quick stab in case we're in melee. Um, lightning damage, so hopefully we're not going to be meeting. We also have a tier 1 horse, which is giving us very fast movement, and it makes us a cavalry type. Um, practically, we're, we're a very mobile uh, lightning bolt mage. Uh, defense mode and resolute are the same thing. All right, yeah. Okay. Adjust appearance. Do I want to adjust her appearance? That's nah, fine. We'll we'll just leave her as she is. Uh, oh, right. What do we got over here? So cavalry unit mounted on animal. Hero. Um, land movement. Ruler. And sandwalk. Good. I think we're going to start moving. Oh, actually, before I move, there's that final unit that I need to verify. In Town Hall Spell Shield. Come on, show me the Spell Shield. How can I access the Spell Shield unit? Uh, do I just need to go into the Tome of Wonders? I guess so. Uh, spell... Shield. Shield. Um, okay. Units, general combat, diplomacy, spell casting. Do I not have access to uh, units cards? What do, what do you mean, video game? Nah, it's probably me being a dumbass and I don't know how to find it. Spell shield. That's the name of the unit. I guess I'm writing it correctly. Let's try that again. F1... I think... No, these are just all game concepts. General... Racial... Infinity Arrayment Race Keeper... Scout Prospecting... No... Combat... Unit... Unit Tier... I don't gain access to them, I guess? Oh, it's a separate tab. Holy shit. Okay, there's multiple tabs. The buttons on the top side uh, get changed. So we have general information, the tomes. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Lore. Oh my god, I could sit all day over here and read all of this shit. Oh god, I'm gonna have a fun time. I'm gonna have a fun time re reading all of that stuff. Okay, so units of all cultures... Wildlife? Nah, 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 let's not spoil ourselves just yet. Uh, but I am going to look at the mystic units. 
that are available. And we're actually going to select the Tigran look. Now let's see what we got. So these are the units that we receive because we are of um, Mystic Culture. Arcanist, Mystic Projection, Soother, Spell Shield, and Spell Breaker. Okay, so let's go with Spell Shield. Uh, this dude is a tank. This is a dedicated tank. He has a shield. Um, defense mode shield wall, 80, 80 HP, which is um, respectable. Defense 5, more of a physical protector. A stunning flash, what's that? Damages adjacent enemy units. Stunned, 60% uh, chance of inflicting stun for one turn. Okay, that's cool. Uh, defense shield wall, star blades, and extra 3 defense against non-flanking flanking attacks. Awesome. Typical tank with a stun effect. Which actually does 9 damage as well. That's kind of cool. They also have physical damage, so great. And then we got a Spellbreaker. Tier 3 unit, Battle Mage. That has Cosmic Bolts. Um, actually upgraded Cosmic Bolts. Um, while the Arcanist does 9 damage per tick, this guy does 12 damage per tick. So that's, that's cool. Well, per attack, I'd say. Star Purge. Um, target enemy units in a... Oh, the range is 6 on that. Oh, that's kind of cool. He's he's this interesting artillery-type unit, so he can stay super far away, and we can just uh, bombard the enemy. Target enemy units in a 1-hex radius lose all positive status effects. Sustain damage, double damage to magic origin units. Okay. And does a respectable uh, 18 damage. Attuned Cast. Adds uh, 10 combat casting points to this combat. Uh, cannot be used. Okay. So I can just activate that at the beginning of the battle. I wonder if that stacks. Because that way I could just replace my arcane. Um, so what I'm looking here. So what I'm understanding from this, from this roster is Arcane Guard Arcanist in the early game with a soother as support, you know, just to heal up wherever needed, and then as you progress through the game, mid-game and late-game, you're looking to replace these arcane guards and arcanists with spell shields and spell breakers and keep the soother just for that support. And then, of course, the mystic projection for scouting. That's the idea that I'm seeing here. Um, we'll see how the summons are going to be playing into into this mix. Okay, so th those are the units. Let's get out of here. Uh, let's make ourselves another scout. It's going to take three turns. Uh, do I, no, I don't want to hurry production just yet. Set Arcane Research. Enables you to learn new spells and acquire new units. The culture and tome you have chosen for your faction determine the initial skills you can unlock through arcane research all right i'm gonna choose a skill so i can summon a phantasm warrior with a respectable 70 hp four physical resistance to magical resistance morale neutral shield unit ethereal uh that sounds that sounds like it's gonna be our tank for the early game it is considered a summon unit or a shield unit? I can't tell. Oh, yeah, okay, so summons a phantasm or a shield unit that strikes with lightning damage. Okay, okay, uh, we're probably going to be getting that. Enchanted Crow Companion uh, grants plus two vision range on the world map. Do we already have something similar? I don't think I'm going to need that. Magical Wards. Inscribe Magical Wards onto the target race, granting two lightning resistance, two fire resistance, and two frost resistance. So practically increasing our already decent to low uh, magical resistance. This is a um, racial ability. It's going to be affecting all of our troops. I want the Summon Phantasm Warrior first. Your because empire will research the skill over time using your knowledge income. Because we are research is completed. You will choose between three new skills. Indeed. Uh, because we are lacking a front line. I'm sadly not seeing the um, the arcane guard to be the best front line right now. Okay, let's uh, get things started. We're gonna be selecting this scout and we're gonna start sending him 
to the north. Is he lacking an animation there? To the northwest. There we go. We see something over there. Good. This other scout. We're going to be sending him over here to take that mana stash. I don't think we have an upper mana limit, which is great. And we're going to send him to the southwest. You have found a friendly free city. Meeting now the separate established contact. You may provide them with a whispering stone. This artifact will sway their relation with you over time until they are ready to become your vassal. When you pick a skill and when that one is learned, uh, th do we get uh, three new options? Yes, it shuffles and it gives you three new options. You can lock. Um, so, for example, if you really liked the, the skill that's going to be uh, affecting all of your units, you can lock that option to appear next time uh, for the cost of mana. Or you can shuffle already what you found uh, by utilizing mana as well. So, you meet Prothelire Mirabilis, who parted ways with the arcane tigrin, uh, tigrins loyal to her as your tribe entered the Valley of Wonders. So we speak again in Amru and Kahanan. Prolahir Mirabilis says, with, pra, pra, um, Mirabilis, I'm, I'm not going to say the first word because I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, says with a stern voice, Remember, we of Estrelonium seek no quarrel. It was magic that caused the loss of our homeland, magic that killed the elder of our tribe. When you took up the elder's tome, you asked for doom. We keep our distance. Evading all magic will keep us safe. So give Mirabilis one of your Whispering Stones to start negotiations and gradually improve their allegiance with you. Let us let us formally begin a diplomatic relationship. Good. So we are slowly going to be building up our relation with Estrolonium and with Mer Myra. I'm just going to call her Myra. So this is going to slowly go. Uh, yeah, definitely give her established your first contact the whisper stone once enough allegiance is gained with a free city and they've become your vassal they could be integrated now i'm not exactly sure what the whisper stone is i think it's a so whispering stones are given to a free city to begin negotiations which can lead to it becoming your vassal having more allows you to befriend multiple free cities Unused Whisper Stones can be given to your city to gain city stability. Okay, uh, so what I'm thinking is these Whisper Stones, they don't, you know, uh, oh, thank you for the nice green marble, and then Whispers, uh, it's making funny noises. What about now? Is it still making funny noises? Is it fixed? So what I'm what I'm imagining, the whispering stone is practically just a cell phone. <laughs> it's it's something to keep in contact uh, with this person at all times. It's not something like yes, kill them all or something like that. I think that's how this works. Her alignment is neutral. What other information can I find? So is the sound fixed or can you guys not hear me at all now? That's good now. Thanks, dear. Love you. For those who don't know, Random Squirrel Arts is my wife. Alright, let's see. Practical operation in four turns. That should be fine. We'll probably integrate them into our society soon. Uh, some enemies. We got some copper golems. Good. Glad to hear it. And then we also have some tier 2 storm scale serpents. Uh, the storm scale serpents have a uh, lightning resistance, don't they? Aw, oh, man. They have a frost weakness, though. Yeah, that uh, lightning resistance is really biting us in the ass a little bit, but we should be fine. Let's further send this guy south. Can I... What's that? Why is that red? I'm not sure. Can I negotiate with you? Boost allegiance. Trade. Okay, okay, okay. So I guess I guess once once our allegiance uh, grows, we're gonna be able to further negotiate. I don't think I have uh, free passage through her territory right now. So we're gonna try to stay away. What the hell is that? Oasis and something mega shiny. Okay, we'll find out soon. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out the enemy to the north. Ooh, that's a tier 3 river troll. Oh no, will he have a uh, lightning weakness? Status resistance. Jesus Christ, he's beautiful. Oh, look at that jawline. Mm -mm. He was a king somewhere in Europe at one point. All right, melee strike, razor net. Holy shit, that does 20 damage. Uh, demolisher, immobilize, charge resistance, demolisher, slippery. Not trigger, ooh, does not trigger uh, attacks of opportunity. You gotta be careful. I can't stop him. I can't stop him on my front line, so he has free roam to get in the back line and murder my face cheeks. Troll natural regeneration. Uh, need to focus him down. Got it. Not really that much uh, magic resistance, so he should go fairly easily. Large target. 20% easier to hit with physical and magical attacks. Has a charge resistance, is immune to most displacement effects, and has demolisher. Cheap uh, and a skirmisher unit. Cheap and swift unit that are useful at flanking and targeting lone enemies. What else do we got up in here? Grimbeak Crows from Age of Wonders 3. A uh, scouting unit, right? Oh, it's, it's considered a fighting unit? Okay. Low maintenance defense mode. Cool. And a Dread Spider Hatchling. Do Dread Spider Hatchlings evolve? Yes! They become Dread Spider Matriarchs, exactly like in uh, Age of Wonders 3. Good stuff. Glad to see that it's familiar. What about the Grimbeaks? Nah, nah, they just gain some extra damage. Okay, that's acceptable. Let's uh, gather up the boys. Can we get into that fight now? Yes, we can. So I'm gonna move these guys over there. I didn't even see the mana node there. Jesus Christ. Uh, any stuff? No. So we're gonna be merging the armies here. Good. And now we will attack. <laughs> Nah, 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 nah. We can attack on this turn, right? Um, I think that number in the top right corner is their remaining movement. So, for example, if I select you... Okay, cannot move. Fertile planes require six movement points. Got it. So, in with that in mind, I should be able to move uh, the Lesser Tight Spirit. Okay. And in this case, I can move Enna herself. Yeah, we are going to be doing that. You're about to enter combat. Inspect all participants and their combined strength before deciding if you want to fight manually. It's fine. I probably will want to fight manually, but I want to see how the AI does on the, um, in this scenario. Auto combat. I see, so... Glorious victory, O oh High Matriarch. You have beaten an army in combat, rewarding you with loot and your surviving units with experience. So we lose the Lesser Tight Spirit. Let's see if we can... Uh, we, we will retry the battle, and let's see if we can do better. Welcome to the field of battle. Here, you must kill or rout your foes in order to claim victory. Indeed. Okay, so... This is a skirmisher unit which is flexible and uses both ranged and melee attacks with its high speed and slippery ability it is the perfect unit for hit and run attacks indeed okay you have selected a unit yes i know about the action this is a battle mage unit which excels at dealing magical damage and applying status effects it is vulnerable to melee attacks and should be kept in the back line. Got it. This is a polearm unit, a frontline melee fighter. With its first strike and charge resistance abilities, it is perfectly suited for absorbing enemy melee attacks. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. This is a support unit, which can use magical abilities to heal and strengthen its allies. Good. You have selected your ruler. Your ruler is a powerful combatant who can wield magical equipment and learn a variety of skills. All right. No information on the lesser tide spirits. Okay. Uh, physical damage. Strikes target enemy inflicts wet, which gives them a minus four lightning resistance. Oh, goodly golly, jeez, whiskers, mister. 
Okay, yeah, we want those guys to... Practically, the idea will be to attack with the Lesser Tide Spirit first, and then everybody else will follow with their respective attacks, because I think everybody has some electric damage, which is going to be great. Now, best case scenario would be to try to bait this guy into the Spears. Into the Britney Spears. And I can get to that position. Okay, yeah, that's doable. I don't think he's gonna attack me in melee, though, but we will try. We'll try to bait it. Good, we want you to face this way. Perfect. I'm practically holding a right mouse button to face him in this direction. We're gonna put him in defense mode. We will see if he will activate my trap card. Good, then we want the Arcanist. So if I remember correctly, if we're gonna be following Age of Wonders 3 rules, I should be able to shoot over this house. But we'll see. Oh, uh, what's the defense? Okay, so three, physical resistance, three. The idea would be that I can put her on the front line. What's the range on these guys? Uh, cannot reach. Okay. I can bait an attack, I guess. We're gonna go here. We're gonna hide the lesser tide spirits behind here. And then we're going to be bringing in... So who provides a better uh, physical resistance? You? Yes. All the adjacent units gain three resistance and status. Okay, so the Soother is going to go here, and is going to go into defense mode. Warding, and that's affecting our front line. So our front line now has seven uh, magical resistance. That is not really going to be super mega helpful against that motherfucker, who is uh, probably going to be putting in the hurt. Go here, and go probably behind the hero. Good. And I think that's going to be our turn. I don't think I... Can I? Let's see. What's the range of the shot? Magic bolts, it has a range of four. No. Okay, uh, defense mode. I think everybody else is going to go into defense mode, and I can't cast on this turn, so uh, we're going to be... We're going to start casting on the next turn. Your spells are now ready to be cast. Spells can... Yeah, I know. I think I know. Market for invulnerability. So this would keep... Keep Summer safe for one turn. Do I have enough to cast both? I do. I have 30 cast points right now. So my idea would be to send in... I kind of want to debate an attack. Okay, those bastards are uh, close enough they can actually get here. Got it. Can, am I in a range to shoot? If I move two steps, I'll be able to fire upon the enemy's booty cheeks. We can actually form a choke. Can I shoot from here? I can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you attack from this position? Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. So I can fire on the magic bolts. Got it. In theory, I can form a choke point right here uh, by placing the arcane guard and Enna. He would have two attacks, one attack. If, if we maintain this position, he won't be able to attack us. Okay, am I in range to attack these dudes? Not yet. I think I can do something like this. There we go, and that is actually giving us range. We might not be able to hit. If I move you forward... Oh, actually, you're going to receive just one attack? Okay, uh, move Enna forward a little bit, because she does have a lot of HP, so we're going to be making use of that. She's not going to attack, though. She's not going to attack yet, but the rest of us will. And then we move the Soother here. Good. So practically now we have a front line. They're going to be able to tank. Uh, they are actually going to go into defense mode. We're not moving them from that place. And that's going to be increasing their resistances. They should be able to take a hit. Oh, she doesn't have any retaliation. That's interesting. These guys might go for the... 
lesser tights for it, but practically right now we're, we're able to shoot upon the spiders. So we're going to be doing that first. We're going to cast a Cosmic Ablation. So that's going to be bringing down 24 HP. It's going to be doing 24 damage. 24 damage to the birds. 25 on the the boy the big boy monster over there you know what i think i'm gonna try to uh play the turn economy a little bit and try to take out the spiders first uh did that cancel the attack nah i need to right click and that's giving a star blades Good. It seems this was also something that I wanted to verify. I wanted to see if that's going to be taking Enna off of her defense mode. It did not, so the spells are separate, which is great. Okay, we can start attacking. Actually, the Soother is not going to attack because we need her, we need her uh, warding to help out the others around her. So we're just going to try to take out the spider with the Arcanists. Let's see. Okay, can the Arcanists take them out? No, we cannot take them out. I could kill them with the Soother. Is that worth it, I wonder? Do I have only... Yeah, it seems I have only one spell per turn. Okay. I could go in and attack, but then we receive a massive attack of opportunity. I think I'm better off waiting here in defense mode. And what's the current resistance for these guys? Five, three, four. If they come in, he's going to be doing 11 damage, 9 damage. You know what? That is acceptable. We will take out the uh, spider. Okay. Yeah, that's acceptable. Uh, I am curious to see, have you received any experience? Or is it same like in Planetfall where everybody receives an equal amount of experience based on the tier of the uh, numbers and tiers of the enemies killed in the previous battle? Um, do you guys see rank anywhere on the, on the unit? Ah, okay, next to the name. It's next to the name. There we go. Recruit. I assume that's the experience bar. It didn't increase when it killed, so I don't think it works that way. Great. Let's end the turn. He's trying to go around. Did 15 damage. We're immobilized. Grimbeak crows are coming in. Ooh. They have a blind chance, really. Where did it say that? Animal... Fighter unit, flying, melee strike, base 30% chance of inflicting blind for one turn. Damn! Damn, boys, you scary. Okay, QE to, to switch around the map. I, um, what's the cooldown on the net? Can't be used for two turns. Okay. We'll want to move. Okay, we'll move you. We're going to try to bait this guy into a, a melee attack. If you come in, 14 damage, that's acceptable, especially if you're going to be on defense mode. Your unit is within an enemy's zone of control. I know, I know, I know I'm in a zone of control, don't worry. Oh, let's uh, eliminate the crows. There. The Arcanists from here should be able to finish the enemy off. Okay, I uh, don't think I need to use uh, Mark of Invulnerability just yet. If I am to utilize Cosmic Ablation, will I have enough for another cast of Mark? Inv of Mark? I think so. Yeah, yeah we do. 12 plus 8 is... 20. So let's uh, take out... Ah, I should have actually cast uh, Cosmic Ablation first because that's giving them Star Blades again. And I think Star Blades stacks three times? Is that right? Is that right? They are good, sir. 
Polar Munit, Sandwalker, Starblades. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, three, stacks up to three times. Good. And it's selected for another three turns. Got it. Uh, then... If they would come in... Let's attack these guys, finish them off. Good. Now, they do have, yeah, they do have the ability to get in there. These guys are going to go into defense mode because they're immobilized. They can't move. Um, trying to bait that attack in here. Out of range. Sure. Okay. We're still trying to bait this guy to come in melee. Let's see what happens now. His morale is low, or whose morale is low? Okay, we got grazed. And he fumbled. Are we bleeding? Yes, we are bleeding. We're taking eight physical damage each turn, so we would want to finish the fight here. Decent amount of damage. If I go... I'm going to do a double flank attack. We are, I think, going to receive one... Re are we going to receive one retaliation? Let's see. I don't think I'm going to put a mark of invulnerability on him just yet. Let's see. Just attacked an enemy from behind. This is called flanking and gives a damage bonus. Use the defense mode cannot be flanked. Yeah, he didn't attack back, and now he is wet. He's vet. So since he's vet, I should. I'll oh, give him a big boom boom. Now the question is, do I give him a big boom boom or do I just kill him off with? Oh yeah, I'm killing off. I'm not gonna use the mana for the big boom boom because I can kill them off with the rest of the units. Um, is this temporary health? Temporary HP is given... Well, temporary HP points are given to a unit when it is healed in combat. When a unit takes damage, temporary HP is lost first. When combat ends, all temporary HP points are removed. Okay, so there's no point in uh, healing this guy right now. Go ahead and break his face. Actually, attack with, attack with the furthest target. All right, we're putting we're putting some spark on his nipples and dead. And look at that, we didn't lose the water spirit. Did a little bit of a better job than the auto resolve, and eh, that's acceptable. Okay, it seems our arcane guard level up, our arcanists leveled up, so they practically receive uh, four extra HP. Is that it? Tier 1. Yeah. All of them receive 4 extra HP. Good. Quest complete. Battle 1. Build a farm. Which is going to happen in one turn. Good. I don't think I need to move on a top of there. I wish I could see the region. Okay, okay, there we go. If I select a region, I can see all of the regions. Got it. Uh, no. You can yeah, I know. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> Just to remove those. Get them out of the way. So do you have any extra movement? I can move. I'll, mo I'll move her back in the army for now. Since we're outside of a friendly territory, I think we already regenerate... How much? Do I mouse over my HP, or how does this work? How can I verify how much HP I'm regening? I don't know. Inspect HP? Mouse over HP? Aha! Total health regeneration 5, because I'm in the wilderness. Got it. Good, and I think I finally finished the first turn of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Finally. Uh, is there anything? Nope, nope, no. Nope. End turn, end turn. God damn it! Just stop, stop thinking too much. Stability measures how. Yeah, that's a bit weird that it got interrupted there. That might need a little bit of fixing. Mending the schism. Following up on a long debate, one of the soothers from Nebular Sanctum approaches you, eager to speak. As you know, my High Matriarch, not all of us Arcane Tigrans had the wisdom to follow your lead to Nebular Sanctum. Some became fearful of the magic that the Elder passed on to you, our High Matriarch. They stayed with Pro 
Prothelire Mirabilis to found a Astrolonium. Oh my god, that's a mouth. We'll say that uh, fast three times. They stayed with Prothelire Mirabilis to found Astrolonium on their own. Will you seek out an ally with Astrolonium to reunite the Arcane Tigrans? I agree we're strongest as one. I shall secure the loyalty with the sword. Which is going to be giving me bad things. Hello, Nahudoi Connect. Uh, Cat Girl, come at you. Your move? I guess so, yeah. My move is I accept the quest. I agree we're our strongest when we're together. Cats together. Strong. This city. I know. Every province has different features. Which Indeed. What type of improvement can be built in it? We can now annex our first territory, which is going to be over here. Uh, this coastal area where I'm going to be building a farm. That's going to be giving us 10 food because pastures, 10 gold because gold vein, and another 7 because it's a farm and it's near a river. That's going to be the best option. Uh, we also finished the quest A New Dawn. You've tamed the land around Nebular Sanctum and invoked a spirit of optimism and adventure in your people. You're staging a play that retells the story of how you led the Arcane Tigrants to safety from the death of the Elders of the Inherited Tome, the schism with Pro uh, Prothelire Mirabilis, and eventually the founding of Nebular Sanctum in the Valley of Wonders. The play in your honor would co would, will conclude with a promise for the future. How do you wish it to end? I should burn my enemies to the ground, though that's all. Okay, Spectre. Go back to your lurky hole. This is a peaceful faction, Spectre. This is a this is a going in diplomacy faction. I still feel like her eyes are too big. I feel, I feel like her eyes are a little bit too What? And she is definitely a cat girl. She's definitely an anime cat girl. Okay, so let's see. The result is for six turns, uh, Nebular Sanctum gains 32 city stability. So that's guaranteed. And besides that, ends with a treasury worthy of a king. We would gain 39 extra gold per turn. The last scene plays on the bountiful fields of Nebular Sanctum. We receive 234 food and we gain one population. On the battlefield, the valorous arcane tigrants fulfill their destiny. We instantly fr uh, finish the production of a mystic projection. Um, I don't think that's needed because we're going to be summoning our units. It has shown the scholars of Nebular Sanctum sitting in their high halls, and we would gain 33 extra knowledge per turn. So because I want to expand my city as fast as possible to the southeast, I think I'm going to be taking the last scene place on the bountiful fields of the Nebular Sanctum. The extra food that's coming from the farm plus the um, bountiful fields will most likely shave off uh, a few extra turns off the population growth. What's that? Astral Echoes are special pickups, only visible to and collectible by rulers. Astral Echoes grant knowledge or mana on pickup. The City Structure Art Altar of the All Seers grants bonus income depending on the amount of Astral Echoes collected. Nice. So, we're, we're going to be grabbing that. Stability measures how happy the people in your city are outside of dark cultures, which do not suffer from low stability penalties. You generally want to keep your stability high. Gotta keep the population high, boys. So, um, we currently have 57 city stability, which is giving us orderly. Let's see exactly what city stability does. Overall control over a city. High stability boosts food and production income. Low stability reduces all city income. Very low stability can lead to the city losing provinces. It drops as the city domains grows and can be regained by building certain city structures. So currently we're sitting at orderly, 40 to 79. And to reach the next rank we would need to get to 80, which is that's a lot. Okay, but... That did give us an extra pop right off the bat. So I think... Oh, we built that nice little farm over there. That's so pretty. Oh, like we, can, we can actually rotate the map too. Oh, that's so cool. How do I reset the map though now that I've rotated it a bit? And I'm sure there's a... There's a button somewhere. Okay, so that farm is now generating the goodies. We can now annex another location. It's probably going to be this location. The um, iron deposit. So 
so let's see. This gets boosted by one farm, so it's already being boosted. That's great. Blacksmith Library Shrine, Stone Conjurer, Storehouse um, for Forester. You can always just build a Forester here and go for a Quarry there. So that's going to be increasing our... Is it going to shave off? Let's see. So we're currently producing 22. Um, if we build a quarry, we're going to be gaining another 15, so that's going to go up to 37. Um, and this needs 91 production. Yeah, it's going to shave off uh, an extra turn off of that, definitely. Uh, in terms of food, we're producing 54 food now. Okay. I think... I think if I build a forester... That's going to give me 56, which is still not going to be enough. Is it going to be enough? Not in one turn, we're going to be growing, regardless of the result. Okay, yeah, I'm getting uh, the quarry there. Good. And then this region will be a forester once we take it, and uh, then we'll be upgrading these regions with conduits and other goodies and delicious stuff. Uh, can I hurry produ Oh, I can't hurry production of buildings. That's cool. I'm actually going to hurry it next turn because, as you can see, the production um, sh shows that the progress for next turn is going to be all the way over there, and then I'm going to pay for the rest of the stuff. Do I have any other penalties for uh, hurrying production? Because in Planetfall, if you hurry production, you also received some um, unhappiness. Actually, I think in Age of Wonders 3, you received unhappiness as well. Nah, seems to be okay. Seems to be okay. Our, the vendor is now boosted, which is going to be giving us some extra gold. Okay, I like that. I like that. Uh, let's send in the scouts. What do we got here? NPC army of marauding guards, inferno hounds. Got it. What on the fuck is that? NPC army of tier one zealots mole knights. <laughs> Angelic mo angelized. These are tier one angelized mole knight zealots. Okay, <laughs> that's a thing. All right, what do zealots do? Let's see. Let's let's have a look. See, so melee strike, fourteen damage per tick. Repeatable attack, pretty decent damage. Defense mode, angelized. The celestial unit type, flying movement, and faithful. Bulwark, defense mode grants blah. Faithful, their upkeep is reduced. And zeal, base attack gains plus two spirit damage. And this damage is doubled against condemned units. Can they also condemned? Uh, celestial units uh, have plus two spirit resistance and they're weaker to blight and frost. Oh, but they're immune to mind control. That's cool. Underground movement, fighter unit, and flying. Okay. Interesting stack that we're probably going to be dealing with. Mysterious whispers of the Astral Sea only visible to and collected by the mystics. Can I grab that with anybody else? Let's see. I can, and it gave me, it gave me uh, knowledge. Awesome, awesome. Good, good. Can't move further in that direction. But I can move here. So let's go like that. An oasis. I think I can move there. 44 mana. There's another mana node to the south, but that could be attached to Astrolonium later. We'll see. You have discovered an ancient wonder. It now needs to be explored before it can be claimed. Though only armies led by a hero can explore ancient wonders. While exploring, you can encounter obstacles which can be overcome in various ways. Though they can always be cleared through combat. Okay, so we found the Guardian Tree. It is a uh, gold ancient wonder, which means that it has a three skull difficulty. So we are not, we can't clear this with our current uh, armies. Scripture describes how the first elves visited all the worlds to seed them with life. This magnificent tree stands as a testament to that age. It is said the souls of these first ones still reside within it, sometimes manifesting themselves as the entwined, 
eternally bound to protect its growth. When annexed, it counts as a forester. It's going to give us um, empire develop. No, not empire development. What's it called? Uh, Imperium. Imperium food production and a little bit of a city um, city instability. It's also going to be giving us plus two mana and plus two knowledge per forester in city domain. Oh god, I could make a I could make a forester spam city around here. Forester spam would mean that I'd be getting a lot of uh, food and production. Okay. Add entwined thralls. Can only be entered and fought by one army led by a hero. Got it. That's all fine. That's all fine. That's, that's an interesting one. Got it. But I'm only going to be able to clear it a little bit later in the game. It's kind of telling me that in this area I should be making a city somewhere. Okay. For you guys, I think I'm going to send you... Actually, I'm going to send you to clear the southeast area because uh, we're about to gain another population. So yeah, that's a good idea. And the scout, that's going to be... The scoot over here, this is going to be produced in two turns. We'll start going northeast. I think that's going to be the way to go. Um, oh, there's another one over there. Uh, cooperation, factor cooperation will be reached in three turns. I can also boost the legions, right? I can boost the legions with uh, Imperium. I would gain four allegiance per turn? Is that how it works? I receive three per turn. Yeah, so base value two, relations respectful, one, three per turn. For the Pact of Cooperation, it requires Allegiance 12. And we're currently sitting on 3? Okay, so that's not really going to be giving us the next tier. I, I, I can shave off one turn later. Okay. Alright, let's attack those uh, two Copper Golems. And I can use our leader to go for it. Uh, manual combat. Because I, I want to get more accustomed to combat. But it seems to be similar more to Age of Wonders 3 rather than uh, Planetfall. Even though accuracy is still in the game. Okay, so what are we fighting against? Copper Golem Tier 1. They look amazing. God, I love that. Ugh. It's like an invisible dude just wearing armor. Melee strike 12, repeatable, yeah. Defense mode, charge resistance for strike, status effect immunity, and status effect immunity morale. So we can't burn them, we can't, uh... We can't freeze them, we can't all of the above. They're also immune to bleeding, poison, disease, and they can be broken. They're, they will fight to the end. Oh, they evolve too! Ah, oh, that's so dope. What? They evolve into what? Come on, show me, video game. Iron Golems, tier 3 shield unit. Ah, oh, so cool. So cool. Nice. I, I really, yes. The more units that evolve, the better. It's, it's one of my favorite mechanics in Age of Wonders. The fact that you can, uh, the fact that you can evolve units is so cool. Almost. I think I'm going to try to bait them into... And we're going to maintain our distance a little bit. I'm going to be setting up a uh, area of control there. I'm going to be sending out... Yeah, we're going to make a choke point around here. Uh, bring in the support soother here. So practically they're going to have a... T uh, they're going to need to take an attack of opportunity if uh, they want to attack the soother. Good. And then we're going to divide the forces, one Arcanist there, one Arcanist here, one Arcanist everywhere. Uh, the range is four, which kind of sucks, but actually I could send you on a flank there. And turn, everybody goes into defense mode. Here they come. Okay, uh, they can reach... They can reach Enna. They're gonna have one attack if they do reach Enna. 
We could not attack them from here. Two attacks from this side. Ah, uh, no, actually, one attack. But if I move forward to attack them in uh, with ranged combat, I see uh, they'll be able to get into melee to attack this person without an attack of opportunity through here. Um, okay, I guess you're going to sustain one damage, one melee hit. There, defense mode. I can also attack them. Cosmic Ablation, 25 lightning damage. Okay. Because they have a lightning weakness. Yeah, sure. Start wailing on them with a little bit of magic. We do have a lot of mana, so it's, it should be fine. Okay, and now I should be able to get into some... Can we kill them? 70% chance to hit. Actually, yeah, let's verify if we can kill them. Bring the Soother in here. Arcanist in here. Maybe? Maybe. Actually, I'm not really providing a defense bonus. So we're just gonna go on, on the offense. Maybe. <laughs> what? Ah, oh, no line of sight? Ah, oh, that sucks. No line of sight. Ah, oh, we just got into melee. We just got into melee. Shit. Alright. I can tie them down. Practically just send in the arcane guard to tie this guy down. But that's gonna mean that I take three hits from the bastard. Retaliation would be 11. He, sh he would survive. But I think she would survive as well from... Yeah, she'll survive from one hit. It's fine. I'm just gonna move Enna forward. Fire away for a kill. Good. Bring the arcane guard forward so we protect Enna. Done. And I think that's gonna be our turn. As I expected, they're going for the attack on the Arcanist. Mm -hmm. But now they have their flank exposed. So we can go for a nice, good old-fashioned flanky boy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move... I'm going to move my Arcane Guard here, which is going to be opening up the route for these dudes. Ah, uh, can't attack with the Lesser Tide boys. Okay, so the Tide Pods can't attack. Soother can attack from here. Okay, let's move the Soother over here. Oh, no, no line of sight. Bull. Okay, there it is. There is a test that I want to do. If I'm going to go... Well, the Arcanist, can they attack from here? Yeah, they can attack from this position. I'm actually going to get the Lesser Tide boys out of the way. Soul 2. Alright, go for the shots. I want to see if they turn around. They do not turn around. Okay. That means I should be able to just finish them off from that distance. I do like the, uh, the, uh, um, lightning effect. Yep, there, there they go. They go down. Sustained one hit. I think, I feel like that could have been avoided, but... It was enough. Hopefully the way I'm fighting makes sense. I do try to explain each and every goddamn move, which might be boring for some people, but I enjoy it. Uh, what do we got here? We've got mana, and we've received a wand of poison darts. A single magic attack at target unit. It does 20 poison damage. It has a 90% ch base chance of inflicted poison. Um, that 90% chance of a base chance of inflicted poison it does not take into consideration the enemy's resistances. It affects by line of sight. Okay, take the reward. So, and that... Sh I should be able to equip it over here. Now, is this worth it? Think of it this way. 
one hit of magic bolts will do 10 lightning damage. It's a repeatable attack. Um, if I attack with the... If I don't move and I attack with the lightning bolt... Um, sorry, magic bolt or lightning orb, it's going to be doing 30 damage. So it's going to be doing more than the wand of poison darts. But in most cases, in most scenarios, I'm going to need to move. I'm going to need to reposition. I'm going to need to get into a better uh, location to shoot people more efficiently. Um, higher accuracy, flanking attacks, shoot them in the ass, and play ball attack. You know. So if she moves once... She will have two. Um, she will have two action points, which will mean twenty damage, which is equal to a wand of poison darts. But if she moves three times, she will be able to do more damage with the wand of poison darts. So think of the wand of poison darts as an opportunity to increase the mobility, um, increase the damage of Enna while maximizing her mobility. So, yeah, we are going to be adding the poison darts. Also, another reason why the poison darts are useful, they open a second damage channel. We will now be able to be more effective against enemies who have a blight weakness. Hello, Katana. Welcome to Hit Point Inn. The day is awesome. The day's good. We haven't leveled up yet. Okay. If I attack those serpents, uh, does everybody participate? I wonder if it's beneficial for me to... Actually, do you have uh, any... I want to verify if if she has any skills that affects the entirety of the army. Let's have a look-see. Oh, learned. Magecraft. What do we got? Ignores up to one status resistance. Gain 10% accuracy. Okay. So that should be from the battle magic... Um, category. I'm actually going to need to look through these, but we're going to look through those after we level up. So we don't have any um, abilities that affect the entirety of the army, so we should be just fine playing this battle out. I'll... No, I don't think I used uh, any spells in that fight, so that's good. That's cool. God, I love that. I love the fact that, that we have a little tents and houses and stuff like that. Really, really hope that as the city will grow, uh, more uh, more housing will appear um, around the city, like it like it happened in Age of Wonders 3. Really hope that's going to be the case, because God, I love that aspect. You could get some beautiful, beautiful cities in Age of Wonders 3. Okay, uh, sure, let's start off that battle as well. Up two Stormscale Serpents... We should be fine. This is fine. Oh, oh, we can move. Okay. Okay, we can't actually reach them this turn. Can, uh, you know. No, no, the, uh, tides, the Tide Pod spirits can't reach them either. Okay, that's acceptable. Understandable. Have a good day. Uh, do I need to... Nope. Can't cast anything. Let's... Good. You have gathered a large amount of... It. Get a large amount of Imperium, and so on and so forth. Uh, what do we got? Hunters from Beyond. For a brief while, your people had found respite in this Valley of Wonders. But now, panicked shouts start to echo in the streets of Nebular Sanctum. Doom is upon us! Monsters from the Beyond! Your scouts arrive shortly after the uproar. Creatures from the Astral Sea have been sighted near the city. The fear of the Arcane Tigrants quickly leads to doubt. Was uh, Prothelir Mirabilis right? Have your magic powers attracted the creatures from afar? To protect your people and restore their faith in your rule, you must seek out the Astral Sea Monsters near Nebular Sanctum. Astral Sea Monsters are denizens of the Astral... Okay, no, let's check what the Astral Sea is first. The Astral Sea is the primal source of arcane powers, a vast ethereal ocean containing and connecting the worlds within. This ocean ebbs and flows, pushes and pulls, seeps into the material world through mana nodes. It contains beings of pure magical energy, such as the Node Serpent, and is traversed by the souls of the dead on their final journey to the Well. 
Powerful mages may follow the astral flows to travel between worlds, but it is a dangerous journey where they may be lured away into the astral void, or become a victim of astral sea monsters. Much safer method involves the use of world gates, which however require great knowledge and skill to be created or used. What's the well? According to my mythology, the Allfather pulled the cosmos from the well of creation. All later creations of the Allfather would date back to this one wonder. From Magehaven, located deep in the Astral Sea, the well can be seen as a looming bright omen, a slowly swirling white maelstrom from which the light of creation emerges in shifting directions. All souls of the dead are drawn to return to the well on, the, on their final journey. Also, this is kind of giving me an impression that the um, well of creation is practically the center of the universe of this world. Okay, Astral Sea Monster, Astral Sea Monsters. Denizens of the Astral Sea, these mana-hungry creatures come in a variety of shapes, from this jellyfish-like Astral Siphoner to the horrifically tragic Lost Wizard. They're all designed to thrive in the harsh environment of the Astral Sea, with many leeching life from any traveler caught unaware. However, not Astral Sea creatures are malevolent, as a gentle mayor are to prove. Okay. Lost Wizard. Lost Wizard was once a powerful, powerful wizard who either by foolhardy choice or forced exile found themselves in the astral void and succumbed to the torment of shadows, their personal hell. These power-hungry husks now glide with deadly purpose through the astral sea as one of the myriad monsters that roam its depths, preying upon the unwary. While it retains an affinity for magic and even clutches its tome of spells greedily, its physical form has twisted to match his environment. Okay. These otherworldly horrors will find that the arcane tigrants are no easy prey. Think they need a few more eyes? Yeah. I think from a design perspective, I think I would have made the eyes smaller and add more. Maybe add a few more eyes on the shoulder. Um, yeah, I think I would have done that. Because the I feel like the eyes are a little bit too big and it's a bit silly, but... Age, the Age of Wonders franchise always had a little bit of silly in it, so, you know, it, it, it works. It works. A new Empire development skill, Enabler Sanctum can exit, annex another province, which is great. So we're probably going to be annexing here, so we can get to the mana node. And this is going to be a Forester, proba probably, yeah. Okay. Nice little, uh... Nice little, um... Early game economy going. Ah, those are the pastures. I see. Got it. That's what's providing 10 extra food. So we have two in that one region. We have both the gold vein and the pastures. That's, that's kind of awesome. Alright, um... We've reduced the evocator's abode. Nice. Sadly, I'm not really. I'm, I can't, don't really see it on the city itself. Uh, we can attract more population. Mystic projection will be done in one turn. Okay, let's see what we can build. I can make a library, which is going to be giving us some extra knowledge, which sounds good. Shrine, which is going to give us extra mana. Storehouse food. Vendor gold. Or we could go for the Town Hall Mages Plaza. Oh no, that's actually going to be boosted after five. And I can still annex the mana node, so I don't need to get the Town Hall Mage Plaza right now. Uh, once it's boosted, I will be building it up because I will want to take the uh, Serpent, the Tranquility Pool, as soon as possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's that's fine. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and make a. Our mana production is a bit low, but we 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 have a large uh, surplus, I guess. So I don't think it's needed just yet. I think I'm gonna go for a storehouse, just further increase uh, further increase the um, food the food the food the population growth. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is the Empire Development Tree. 
Here you will specialize your empire towards certain playstyles. Increase your empire's affinity to open more options. You will progress toward unlocking your next empire skill every turn. De choosing a... Okay, so uh, this panel gets unlocked at turn three, I think. Um, our empire is going to start unlocking in different directions depending on your um, faction's affinities. We have five astral and one shadow. So we're going to slowly unlock in the shadow direction, astral direction, and you always unlock in the general direction. Everybody has this. You will be able to unlock further down. What do we got here? Income per turn. We receive more uh, Imperium. Total 12. Uh, do I click this? No. Okay, no, no, no. This is always unlocked. It practically shows me the current production. Got it. So, I will have this available in two turns. Basic sea for a ring. Unlocks the ability for units to embark and use vessels to cross the water, and for flying and floating units to travel over water. Okay, so I guess my tide... My lesser tide spirits can't really travel over water because I don't have basic seafaring, which is a bit sh okay, acceptable, fine, I'll take it. A bit shit, but <laughs> I'll take it. Excavation, ability for units to excavate earthen underground. Uh, as I understand, there's not really going to be a lot of underground locations here. Maybe if I just am swimming in Imperium. Increase city cap, good. Uh, units can build roads. Good, that's cool. Right of last stand. Each city in your empire loses one population, but immediately summons three tier one units. Which, ours are not really that powerful. I feel like this is much more much more um, efficient for barbarians um, and factions that have horde tomes. Because those, those practically empower tier one units. Oh, also, order factions uh, that buff their uh, tier 1 units with um, Mighty Meek. Yeah, so it's going to be much more useful to them. Um, extra Whispering Stone, that's kind of cool. Sense Range, Forced March, Siege Project, Teleporter Province. Okay, uh, later. I'm not seeing anything that jumps at me yelling, please take me, I'm yours right off the bat. Where are we going to be getting in, in this direction, though? So we can already get uh, casting reserves, gain 20 combat casting points, and 20 world map casting points. That sounds powerful. That's going to be available in two turns, Astral Inspiration. Whenever a new research skill is researched, the knowledge cost of another random skill is reduced by 25%. Nice. Uh, locking and shuffling research skill costs 50% less, uh, research city structures cost 50% less gold and production to build. That's also good. So we're, practically, we're going to be focusing on, uh, knowledge gain and mana generation. What do we got in shadows? Knowledge extraction. Gain 50% knowledge per level of heroes defeated in combat. I guess I could get this in an emergency... Um, if I see enemy heroes, because right now I can use that Imperium for something else. But still, cool. Free cities with the Whispering Stone assigned instantly provide you with vision range, and uh, they grant me 10 knowledge. That's cool. Magic Origin unit upkeep is reduced by 20%, which works great with... Uh, our racial ability of already decreasing the upkeep of summoned units. Hopefully that, that stacks. Uh, death magic. Gain 5 combat casting points per unit dead or killed in combat. Good. Practically it goes hand in hand with our casting ability. Right of the Crypt Blade. Gain the Crypt Blade hero item. What's this? So Crypt Blade... Melee item, resurrect targets, kill the zombies under the wielder's control. Nice, not really useful for a mate, for a spellcaster, but if I get if I get a uh, melee hero, that crypt blade could be cool. Is it a one-hander? It seems to be a one-hander. Okay. Stolen power, gain twenty mana and twenty knowledge upon completing 
conquest of a city. Uh, does that also takes takes into consideration um, vassalage or integration? They suddenly gain five hundred knowledge. These are repeatable, but they increase their Imperium cost each time you utilize them. Court of Whispers. Gain the ability to assign Whispering Stones to other Empire's vassals to gain their tribute. Cool. So it's a sneaky... It's a sneaky... Your vassal is now my vassal as well. Shadow Empire skill. Your heroes gain experience 100% faster. All your heroes instantly gain one rank. So practically, the later in the game I utilize this, the better, because as they level up, they're going to be requiring uh, more experience. Uh, your units gain universal camouflage in your domain. Oh, that's awesome. D uh, very, very dickish in multiplayer, I guess. You are practically forcing the enemy to uh, invest into um, detection. Armies regenerate 10 HP per turn in hostile domains, and... Spying Shadows. Immediately reveal the full world map. Your throne city gains infinite sensing range. And armies in sensing range reveal their number and allegiance. Okay, cool. So practically uh, the ultimate uh, true sight. You see everything. It's, it's Big Brother, the uh, fantasy version. But I think I'm more interested in Arcane. And I think investing into this right off the bat might be a good idea. Because we're going to be getting into a big boy battle. So we'll take that. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Research skill reduced. Locking. Spells can now be cast on the first turn of combat. Ooh, so good. Want that. Instantly gain 1,000 mana. Good. Gain knowledge whenever a unit gains a rank. Nice. Uh... Surge spellcasting. Casting a combat spell reduces the cost of all other combat spell types by 25% for two turns. Okay, so practically um, spellcasting snowballing. Immediately summon an army of magic origin units with low maintenance at your throne city. Can, is this practically just a free army because of the low maintenance from the other parts as well? Where was the low maintenance of magical origin? Ah, there it is, shadow binding. That's that's a must. Uh, what else do we got? Your throne city gains extra knowledge for each magical magic material your empire has access to. Uh, research posts grant extra knowledge. Conduits grant extra mana. Astral right immediately conjures a defended magic material near each city in your empire. Whoa, okay. Immediately control a defended magic material near each city in your empire. So practically, it, it literally summons a resource node. Nice. Near each city. So if I have three cities, I will have uh, summoned three magical material sites. Okay, that can snowball out of control. Especially if I can uh, reactivate this, I can just gather up all of the... Uh, magic materials. Teleportation mastery. Armies are restored to full HP and regain 50% of their movement points after using the teleporter, and it grants a flat 15 mana. Hey, end date. You were looking at this game still on the fence if you'll get it or not? Uh, for what I see right now, it's pretty good. I heard that there are some exploits and uh, bugs still present in the game, but that's normal for most video games nowadays. Uh, from what I've been playing, I did not have any... Um, technical issues with it just yet. Astral Binding. New magic origin units gain plus three rank. Beautiful synergy. Good, good shit. Okay, uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna be gaining more in that general direction. Um, can't attract population yet. Uh, can boost allegiance here. Can I boost allegiance twice? I wonder... I'm going to be gaining another three per turn, so I can shave off one turn off of this. Okay, and that means I'm going to have the Pact of Cooperation in one turn. Opens its borders and trading is enabled. And magic materials can be traded. Cool. Also small monster den, which I'm going to need to deal with. 
How's that unit coming along? On one turn, he's going to be ready. Okay. Storehouse. Do I want to hurry production? Is that going to shave off um, one turn, maybe? 53, 60. I don't think it will. So it's probably going to be bringing it to 63. 63 times uh, 3 is... 118... 192? Oh, I think it just might. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it does shave off one turn. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, I feel like I should get... Um, 189? Ah, oh, okay, my bad. I don't know. I was being dumb dumb. No, 64 times 3 is 192. Okay, Granary. Boosted by building two Foresters. Gonna be bringing us another 20 income. Arcane. No worries, man. All's good, all's good. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it. I think, I think what I need right now is knowledge. I think I just need to boost that up a little bit. Okay, give me a library. Um, three turns. And then we'll see where we go from there. Let's move. What's this? Watchtower provides vision rain. Okay. Pool beans. I cannot... You must research seafaring from the Empire for me to float. Lucky guess. What's that? Galleon wreckage. Moving your army onto it will grant you gold. I feel like we're going to be having a lot of floaty units, so that's cool. Do I research seafaring? Sh sh should that be a priority for me? Uh, when will I be getting this unlocked in two turns? I mean, in one turn I'm going to have enough for basic seafaring. I guess I could get it? Uh, when will I unlock um, Astral Inspiration? Available in two turns as well, and it's going to require 75 Imperium. Okay, I need to save the Imperium for that. Got it. Okay, we're going for that. I think it's a little bit of a higher priority. Getting that as earlier in the game as possible is going to be much better than getting Seafarer. I guess I'm just going to move him around this ballpark, and we'll see where we go from there. Alright, you get that... Um, so the objective is in the northeast where I'm going to be sending the main army. I'm going to be sending this guy to the southeast then. Oh, hell yeah. That's a gold vein. Cool. Yeah, this location definitely needs a, an extra city. City ruins. Well, there you go. I can just go there and rebuild there and uh, it's going to slowly expand in the north. Mm -hmm. Do I need a hero? Probably. But that's still cool. I know about Imperium all's good. Let's do the fighty fight. The fighty fight of God. Back to Bash Village with Australian Astrolonium. Explore an ancient wonder. Probably need to deal with that small monster den. And they will reach back to cooperation in one turn. So things are looking okay. I'm not sure if I'm I'm doing the min-max right, but it's okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set her to attack. There. It's a safe battle. Can I auto-resolve this? Yeah, I, I can auto-resolve it and nobody died. That's great. That's mm, that's fine. And uh, our uh, lesser tide spirit leveled up. He is one step closer to becoming a tide pod. Skill every time they reach a new level. You can choose how to specialize your heroes. Cool beans. So now we have our girl here who leveled up. Let's see what do we got to play around with. So we got warfare, battle magic, and support. Warfare, melee focus. Uh, melee and archery focus, actually. Battle magic, ranged magic focused. And then support is effects that 
um, apply to the entirety of the army. I think I'm going to take my time and look through them to the horror of those who are watching the stream. So we get archery. This will unlock archery 2. 10 damage, 10 accuracy. I wonder if that accuracy also applies to... Oh no, it's physical ranged attacks gain a 10 damage, 10 accuracy, so it doesn't affect magic. Got it. You cannot stack archery with magic. Noted. Defense. Uh, defense increased by one and five percent evasion. I wonder if you can. I wonder if you can create dodge tanks in um in Planetfall in Age of Wonders Planetfall. You can actually create dodge tanks. Uh, you would go with the uh, secret tech of teleportation and the um, the normal human race, and they would have technology where you would be able to stack dodge. Um, and you could create 70%, 80%, 90% dodge tanks, which was pretty insane. Uh, fighting. Melee attack gains more fighting and extra fighting on top of your fighting. You can also get sprint, which, if I remember correctly from Age of Wonders 3, it was a rogue ability. Um, so you gain eight, eight, uh, plus 8 movement. Um, it's a free action, it seems. And although it ha does have a 3... Uh, Return cooldown, you would get slippery, elusive, and swift, so you're not being affected by opportunity attacks, not stopped by enemy zones of control, and you're swift. You can just get behind the enemy's booty cheeks and start slapping. <laughs> okay, Sentinel. Oh, does this unlock anything else? No, it's a, it's an active ability. Got it. Sentinel, you gain first strike. And 20% extra damage via retaliation attacks and opportunity attacks. So, retaliation attacks is when you're attacked, you attack back. Opportunity attacks is when one of your enemies moves through your, your zone of control. That's how that works. Alright. And you just need to learn two more warfare skills to unlock. So I would need... If I if I want to build a actually I'll, I'll read that I'll I'll talk about that in a second because we're going with tiers here as well it's kind of similar to tomes let let me just look through all of them and then we'll discuss this doesn't unlock anything else right no eagle eye uh, grants physical range attacks plus one range nice and plus ten uh, accuracy which is cool because practically you could try to create a mini artillery unit. You, or you could build the mini, mini artillery unit that would force the enemy to come to you and keep your boys safe. Martial expertise, a melee and physical ranged attack gain plus ten percent damage, so that scales with all of the above. And then killing momentum, unit regains one action point when killing another unit. Once works, uh, works once per turn. That's cool because it. It could make you attack another person next to it, reposition, or set yourself in, def in the defense mode. Actually, no, it literally gives you an opportunity to go in defense mode. Okay. Or cast a spell, or attack again. You could, in theory... It's a theory. Actually, it probably works. You could attack with Lightning Orb, and kill a unit, and then... Use your extra action point to use the Wand of Poison Darts, which does another flat 20. Uh, so you can squeeze out, in theory, 50 damage. Okay. Now, if I were to create a tank character, I would probably add defense. Um, two points in defense and a sentinel, or one defense, one fighting into sentinel. And that practically makes you get on your way of uh, becoming a tank. You can also get archery into... I'm not exactly sure if automatically you can gain archery level 2. It might not be a novice hero skill. It might be an adept. I'm not sure. But the idea you could you would be to gain archery and maybe one into defense or archery fighting if you're going to be more of a skirmisher unit. Or archery sprint to get into those sexy uh, shooty positions. Not exactly sure if you further unlock stuff, but practically you would go archery something else into eagle eye 
into martial expertise. You would also gain, uh, even if you go for the melee build, where you go defense, fighting, or double defense uh, into sentinel, you would also get martial expertise because it's helpful. Killing momentum helpful for everyone. Good. What do we got in battle magic? So yes, magecraft indeed is an adept. Got it. So, attunement, starblades. When a spell is cast, this unit's base attack randomly gains one fire, one light, uh, or one lightning, or one frost. And it stacks up to three times. So, practically, we would have the same ability that our, the rest of our race has. Channel power. Uh, magic attacks gain 80% damage until the end of the next turn. Oof. Is it just for her, or does it affect all magic attacks? Cannot be used when within... Okay, can only be used once per battle. Support ability. It doesn't say if this is castable on me, or is it, if it's castable on other people as well. But in theory, it, no, no, it would be too overpowered to affect everybody. Yeah, oh yeah, it would be too overpowered. Just practically on turn one, you would cast channel power. And then on the next turn, you just nuke the fuck out of the enemy. Support ability makes it sound like a targetable buff. It does, yeah. Oh, it does have zero range. So that's that either means it's a touch spell, so I can touch the person next to me, or it affects me only. We'll, we'll see. She also needs all of her action points to use this. So she needs to not move. She, she's practically charging, she's charging her laser. Lightning Evoker. Deals damage to target enemy unit and two others within three hexes. Azure range implies self-buff? Yeah, yeah, I was thinking of that. As I said, it either implies self-buff or it implies it's a touch spell. Yeah, this, this sounds amazing. Deal damage to target enemy units. Um, I don't think it's a repeatable attack. It requires all three action points. It sunders resistance. And it also adds electrified, which I think uh, decreases... Oh no, electrified sufferers lightning damage. Holy shit, it's bleed. It's bleed only for lightning. Oh god, that sounds amazing. This thing sounds powerful. Always hits, so no accuracy problems. Yeah, Lightning Invoker sounds stupidly powerful. And it in effect, uh, adds Sundered Resistance, so all other units do more damage. Yeah, yeah, you can stack. I don't think you can stack Electrified, though. You can stack the um, Sundered Resistance, but you can't stack Electrified, I think. I'm not sure. Okay, resistance. What's this? Uh, plus one resistance, plus two resist uh, status resistance. Okay. I guess you could combine resistance one with defense. Actually, yeah. Learn two more warfare skills. Ah, okay, so it must be warfare skills for me to get sentinel. Got it. There should be a one turn overlap where the bleed ticks double. Nah, nah, nah. That would be too fucked up, buddy. Hey, sub. How you doing, man? I'm having fun. What else do we got here? Distant Evocation. Magic attack gain plus one range. Fire Evoker. Deals damage in a one hex radius, which would add burning for three turns. Magecraft 2. Ignores up to two status resistances and gain accuracy. Arcane Strength. Magic attacks gain 10 damage, 10% 10 damage and 10% accuracy. They ignore up to two status resistance, so all of our debuffs apply better. So we could improve the power of lightning evocation. I'm in my happy place with Age of Wonders. Yes, I am in my happy. I'm in my happy place with a lot of video games. I just get get burned out on some. Instrict Frost Evoker deals damage to units in a three hex cone. 60% chance of inflicting Frozen, and make them hear a very, very catchy theme song for one turn. And if unsuccessful, it does inflict slow. Weaver. Refresh all of your ability cooldowns and once-per-combat abilities. Hoo! Hoo-wee! 
Oh, that is powerful. Later in the game, once we get uh, some once per combat abilities, actually. Not really that powerful right off the bat. But yeah, practically we can really, really hunker down on one... Um, we can really hunker down on one uh, damage channel focus, and I guess for us it's going to be Lightning. Where we could go Lightning Evoker into Magecraft, into Arcane Strength, into Weaver. But I don't think I would grab um, Lightning Evoker, Fire Evoker, and Frost Evoker. Because um, it would be weird. Have I streamed 4 yet? This is 4. What's up? This is literally Age of Wonders 4. Not sure if these would unlock more down the line. They probably would. Okay, and then for support, what do we got? Experience leader. While well, in the army, uh, while army leader, all non-hero units gain two experience for each turn. That could be useful uh, because we are focusing on summoned units, and I think a lot of summons. I know. Have you streamed it yet? This is the first stream. Hopefully that makes sense. So because we use summon units, a lot of summon units actually evolve into superior forms, so it could be useful. What else have we got? Restore. Target friendly units. Heal. Oh, this is just a support spell. Active support spell. Uh, heal somebody, gain regeneration. I don't think I'm going to be building Enna... Uh, as a support mage, I think she's going to be going down the damage route. So I don't think I'm going to be gaining a restore. It does have their negative effects removed, but I think that our other support unit does the same. True Sight, we can see camouflaged bo <laughs> boobs. <laughs> yes, we can see camouflaged boobs. I wanted to say camouflaged dudes. I swear, officer. I swear it was camouflaged boobs. Please, please. Uh, ten... Oh, Vigor. Ten extra... HP. Okay. So practically this could work. So if I were to make a melee tank, Vigor in combination with Resistance in combination with whatever we have in Warfare could work. That's kind of interesting. Bolstering Support. Support abilities grant one Bolstering Resistance. Defense Training. All of the units in the army receive uh, one Defense, one Resistance. Inspiring Leader. All units receive minus 20% unit upkeep. That could work hand-in-hand hand with uh, uh, Summoning Channeler and the Empire Upgrade. So I could bring this... Oh my god, can I make my units literally free? Well, summoned units literally free. That's kind of interesting. Entire army receives resistance training, extra 10% damage melee, combat casting. Add 10 combat casting points to this combat. Endurance training. While army leader units in the army gain plus 15 HP and two status resistance. Precision training. Hell yeah, upkeep reduction. 10 accuracy and 10 crit. Spur to action. Target friendly unit regains its action points. Oh, right, double turns. So practically, I could... I could try to get this. This, this is what's the most powerful thing in the support tree. Uh, where you could have a tier 5 unit. So let's say you have a tier 5 artillery unit in your army. The artillery unit attacks, and then you have your hero next to that artillery unit, and you activate Spur to Action, and that tier 5 artillery unit, if there is such a thing, I'm just imagining here, uh, would have an extra turn. So that sounds disgustingly OP. It can only be used once per battle, but... And it's a big but... I could have... I don't know if you could have Weaver. No, I think I'm going to go with a Combat Mage. Uh, we are probably not going to take Attunement. We're going to take Lightning Evoker. We're going to go with that. We're going to go with a Ranged Combat Firepower Mage. Or give an extra turn to a Fighter Hero of the same army. That's true as well, yeah. Practically any unit. Very powerful. You can have... Yes, it is true. You can... I can confirm it. You can have multiple heroes per army. You can have a full stack of heroes. In three. Good, good. 
Let's travel northwards. Like a dark elf setup. Oh, it's gonna be a bit nasty traveling through the forest. I think I'm gonna go here like that. Research complete. Summon Phantasm Warrior. Isabella's Harem. Okay. Alright, what's the next? I need three research cycles to unlock a new tomb. Dark Elves can suck on that, or well, they won't, but they wish they could. Okay. <laughs> Saves a warding. A make support abilities of enchanted units grant two bolstering resistance to affected units. Okay. Magic shield. Target unit receives two bolster defense, two bolster resistance. Alright. Full stack of heroes. Is this a Heroes of Might of Magic 4? It can be. It's similar, probably. Static shield. Target friendly unit gains a shield that has a base 60% chance of inflicting stun on the attacker. Now that is something I would want. Although, wow. It takes a lot of big brain. Okay, a lot of big brain. We're currently producing 62 big brain per turn. I think the most efficient thing to research would be magic shield. All the vampire heroes are women, so it's the Harem army. Okay, man, I don't know. I don't think we're gonna, I'm going to be going down the vampire route. We'll see. I think I'm going to be focusing more on astral affinity while dipping a bit. Dipping the balls a bit into shadows. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I guess I'm going to go with magic shield, although it doesn't really feel that powerful. It saves a warding don't feel that powerful either. I wonder if... If the defensive ward is considered a um, support ability. Harem girl reference? Ah, uh, okay. Oh, I guess I didn't understand the reference. And yes, you were referring to Isabella von Karstein from uh, Total War Warhammer 3. Sorry that I didn't get get the memo hand date. And yes, she is amazing with a full hero stack. I guess you could do the same here. Although, heroes are much more useful being spread out a little bit. You know, the more they're spread out, the more they can spread out butt cheeks uh, across the realm. I think I'm gonna go with Magic Shield for now. Buff spell that only gives... Ah, oh, yeah, sure. Half it. Let's go with that one. It's also the most efficient. It makes the most efficient use of the knowledge because uh, 62 times 4 is 248. Dark Elf of Skyrim is a fire wielding mage, essentially, my reference. Okay. Okay. I see. Man, so many video games being uh, thrown around. Okay. Uh, Mystic Projection is going to be ready in one turn. Let's go. Now that you have gotten a second scout, you will need more powerful armies to claim the valuable locations you may come across in the realm. Bear in mind, scouts are not meant for combat, so build your army wisely. I forgot to summon a Phantasm Warrior before ending the turn. God damn it. Make an army of six units. I have an army of six units. You have Skyrim never played it? You should. Negotiation is successful. We have now a pact of cooperation. Uh, trading is now enabled. Up to resource trade or the trades are available. Good news. Pact of loyalty is going to be received in five turns. I'll actually need... It's going to be available in one turn. So, and next turn I can actually get Astral Inspiration. So that's going to be cool. Astralonium. You can... I I'll test this out, see if I can... Uh... Revenants of a distant past. Within the depths of the valley, your mystic projection comes across a large area of overgrown ruins. What has now largely been reclaimed by nature must have once been the thriving city of a great civilization. However, a lingering force of bitterness dwells beneath the peaceful surface. You can sense there are spirits which still begrudge the ancient wo 
woe that happened here. The ruins would make a formidable location to found a city and let the burden pass to make way for a new future. We would receive 77 Imperium. I will consider this, or these old spirits give me a prime opportunity to study the past. Attempts get to commune with the linger- Oh, it's because we're of a mystic approach? Maybe? I can see we're full of games or surely, surely play through them a time comes. Okay. You play whenever you want, man. I'm not your mother. <laughs> Tempts to commune with the lingering spirits to learn of their past. Force strength. Astral affinity check. Ah, my affinity. 60% success. The stories of the spirits give you new insight about the fabric of the cosmos. We would receive 160 knowledge per turn. And magic shield would change from three turns to one turn. But on a failure, the spirits don't answer your call. And we will lose one astral affinity per turn. Uh, I will consider this. I will rebuild the city. I'm not gonna go for the. Not gonna go for the rebuild. Can I rebuild here? Let me see. Holy mother of God! What the hell is that? Astral dew, dew the dew, mountain dew. No, I can't build. I re it requires a hero unit. What in the ever living fuck is that thing? Tier two flow serpent. All right. Do we have a little bit of a flavor text for it? Some lore text. Ah. In the previous games, in the previous iterations of the games, you would have uh, flavor texts for each and every unit. They would receive a description. I am not seeing it here. Maybe it's in the encyclopedia. Let's see. It's floating. It's swimming through the air. Okay, is it in the animal section? Flow serpent, yes. Ah, no. We don't have any flavor text. That's sad. Okay, ugly. What do you got? Melee strike, astral pursuit. Teleport the unit to target unit and deal damage to it. Okay, so it has an astral char- uh, It has a teleportation charge. Defense mode, astral refuge. Uh, when this unit is hit, it becomes invulnerable and stunned. Ew. Wait, does that mean that I can just shoot it and it's gonna go away for a while? Oh, that's kinda dope. It also has a shock weakness. It's also ethereal. Fighter unit, floating, magic origin. I wonder if you can gain a magic origin control spell. Okay, this is a support unit an Astral Wisp. It has cosmic bolts. Astral Membrane. Melee attackers have a 30% chance of becoming stunned, and it can pass through things. Got it. Okay. Not really that difficult of a fight now that I'm looking at it. Guardian Tree. Uh, I guess here... It's Tinkerbell? Yeah. Yeah, it's a Tinkerbell unit. Good. Now... We have Astral Inspiration. Wait, what? Turns until available one turn. Oh, really? I thought it would be available this turn. That's annoying. It's so annoying. Jesus Christ. I can get basic seafaring, then. Oh, it's also going to be available in one turn. I could save up for both of those now that I'm looking at it. So that would cost me 50... And this would cost me 75, 75 with plus 50, that is 125, which we already have. Uh, so I can play around with around f f uh, 45 Imperium. Uh, Hallentime, thank you for becoming a follower. Welcome to Hit Point In. Okay, so what can I do with 50 Imperium? Oh, 45 Imperium. Can I boost this to the next level. I can boost this to the next uh, population. She'll seduce me and steal my soul? Clearly. Clearly. The evil Tinkler Bell will seduce you and try to steal you. Wait! Wait, wait. Didn't normal Tinkler Bell try to do that with Peter? In uh, Peter Pan? <laughs> it's the same thing. Alright, now nah, I'm kidding, man. Uh, 35, we would gain 7 allegiance points. Let's see. 
Requires 27 allegiance to go to the next one. Uh, I guess I'm going to be shaving off. I'm not sure how much I would shave off. Okay, no, no, no. I think I'm better off just uh, gaining the extra population. Let's just go get, get that. And that's going to mean that I get to construct some additional pylons. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, I think she was in love with him. Too bad she wasn't evil. Sure, sure, sure. I was joking. She's not evil. She is indeed in love with Peter. With Peter Parker. Conduit or research. You can make this location into a well of learning. Researching spells cost on less knowledge. I could just go balls of the walls into knowledge gain. That's kind of cool. Alright, yeah, let's uh, do a research outpost. Okay, research post here. Not actually shaved off. No, probably not. And we are going to be getting that location after we build something. I could hurry the production and I could start getting the town hall right off the bat. Yeah. Hurry the production, and we're gonna get the Mage's Plaza as soon as we can. By the time the Mage's Plaza is done, we're gonna be very close to another um, population increase, which is gonna, which will mean that I can get this region, and that's gonna be an extra research post and the Tranquility Pool. It's all coming together. Can I enter a town soon? No. No, you cannot uh, war band it up. We're gonna move through here. Uh, now that you have a sufficient army, you're ready to expand and conquer. Armies are expensive, so put them to good use. Send them out with a hero to gain experience and discover new resource nodes. Yep, yep. Good. Let's travel here and see what we can find. Absolutely nothing. You're building this big city, it would be nice to see it for a change. Yeah, practically if you just zoom in, you'll be able to see all of the nodes that you build upon it. This is the main city, then we got a farm, we got a quarry over here, a forester post, a research post, and it's going to be a second research post up, up in here. So that's nice. Even a basic town scene like yeah, Heroes of Might and Magic would have been fine. I guess the basic town scene is this. This is your basic town scene, where you see the governor and your city in the distance. I wonder if this image increases in size, depending on uh, what type of buildings we add. Would be a nice touch. Uh, you... I'm gonna start sending... Actually, no, next turn I'm gonna start sending you towards the Flotsam, because he is about to be able to float on water, which is great. Uh, you can't reach this location, you won't be able to reach it the next turn. You are probably going to be exploring a little bit to the southwest a little bit in this direction. I want to see what's uh, around Astrolonium. Is it a, there a big difference from Age of Wonders 3? Um, it's if Age of Wonders 3 and Age of Wonders Planetfall had a baby. The entire UI is from Planetfall. Um, the diplomacy is from Planetfall. And they switched up town management a little bit. Um, units, mostly very familiar from Age of Wonders 3. Spells, incredibly familiar from Age of Wonders 3. That's it. It's literally the uh, last two games combined into one. Which is for the better, I think. Really for the better. Good, good improvements all around. Alright, so that is again next turn. What I can do here is I can summon a Phantasm Warrior. Which is going to be available next turn. I could have done this last turn, goddammit, and I would have had a new boy. You play 3 and it didn't grab you, but this looks a bit better. So, Hendate, I think the reason why 3 didn't grab you is because the first campaign of that game is incredibly stupidly difficult, and it gives and it puts you at the helm of a rogue, which is one of the more difficult classes uh, to play with in the game. And, yeah, that's why a lot of people kind of stay away from Age of Wonders 3. They really should have put 
uh, the Commonwealth campaign as a beginner campaign recommendation. Because as as the Commonwealth, you had a as a dreadnought, you had a much easier time. This game's on console, but you're not sure it's realistic for a controller. Um, I think you have a lot of options with a controller, and it's it's pretty simplified. You should be good. Although you might want to check out maybe some streamers who are going down the. Uh, the console route and uh you know they're gonna give you you their their two cents for how the controls feel i think you got through that but it was after that as well you got a little bit the feel of having to do chores to get through the campaigns a bit i don't know i really really enjoyed the uh specializations and combos in there okay uh, it's end turn is there anything else i can do here do i need any other unit so practically our front line is going to be supplemented by Phantasm Warriors. I can get an Arcanist going for a second army. I can get two Arcanists going for a second army, actually. That should be fun. Control strikes, but if you have it, must use it. I mean, if I understand correctly, you can always connect a mouse and a keyboard to a console. Or is that blasphemy? And I should uh, swallow my tongue. Knave. Meeting Curious Orac Oraculum, Sir Scriva Stargazer of the Free City of Oraculum greets you with some curiosity. Legendary Enam Ru Enkahanan, it is rare for Oraculum to meet an ascended champion like you. Nevertheless, we ask that you respect the territory and independence of Oraculum. Give the mortal Scriva Stargazer one of your whispering stones to start a negotiation and gradually improve their allegiance with you. Yep. Yeah. So, Oraculum is to the southeast. I can use a keyboard and mouse. Xbox Series is essentially a PC. Cool. Isn't it the other way around that you can always connect a controller to a PC? Uh, you can do both now, hand date. Looks doable for a controller. Can scroll through most of the menus from the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah, you can. But if you have a controller plus mouse and keyboard, you never use controller this way. Okay. That's fine. We are going to be getting... Um, first, I'm going to get Astral Inspiration. And now I'm going to get Basic Seafaring. Which is not mega useful, but it'll be fine. We'll travel there. Oh my goodness gracious, he embarks. Don't you have floating or something? Oh my god, he doesn't. Hey, Void Fox. Oh, performance feels good. Performance feels good. I didn't have any problems. Did you guys see any stuttering? All's good from my end. There's the uh, the void shits. The astral siphoner. Okay. I know he's called the astral siphoner, but I'm just gonna call him void shit. He looks like a void shit. Use a keyboard and mouse for flight sim, but you rather. Or lounge with a controller, which is perfectly understandable. Each video game is either better with a mouse and keyboard or with a controller. Yeah, you do you, man. You do whatever you f whatever feels right for you. Didn't see any performance dips or any problems of the sorts. Technically, it's solid. It is. Um, so, Age of Wonders 4 is using the Planetfall engine, so I think they have it down pretty well by now. They didn't really build a engine from scratch this time, which is great. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they can utilize the uh, Planetfall engine. The Planetfall engine looks pretty good. Okay, so what do we got here? 100 HP. It has a, It's a tier 3 unit. Melee single strike. Astral pull. Pulls a target unit to a hex adjacent to this one. So practically we need to rush this motherfucker. Or he yanks somebody. Astral membrane. Astral Torrent, when this unit dies, friendly units within a 2-hex radius heal 15 HP. Mm -hmm. Racing and fighting a controlled a controller territory? Uh, what? So we're going to push in that direction. Am I uh, going to add the extra unit here? Probably. And we're going to utilize 
one of the Arcanists as a satellite unit. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. Launch that here. And there we go. We now have a Phantasm Warrior. Which even looks, uh... Which even looks, um... Tigran. I kind of liked the design of the Phantasm Warriors from Age of Wonders 3. They just looked more magical in nature. This looks kind of like uh, we are summoning a dead spirit through arcane means. And I kind of like the, their ethereal, floaty vibe. Hell, I would have embraced that style a little bit even further. Make them zip around. Make them uh, um, feel like they're resistant simply because they're so fast or something like that. Even though you don't really give them evasion, you just give them tank stats. But I guess having a shield on the unit does mean that, hey, he has a shield. That means he's a tank. Really want to buy a steering wheel for Wreckfest and F1, but you also want a throttle and wheel for Flight Sim. Tough decision. Uh, it depends which video game you want to invest more time in, my man. You might want to check out video game, you know, video game lists to see uh, which one, which video game supports that controller more. Are there more racing games? Are there more Flight Sims on the platform? But again... You know, you, you gotta search within thyself, good sir. Also, do I gain uh, soldier rank right off the bat? That's cool. We also gained extra defense at elite. All right, so that's through and through a tank unit, which I'm gonna get. That good. He's also ethereal, maybe. Yeah, he is ethereal, so he's immune to quite a few things. That's great. That's great. All right. Uh, stay. Actually, if I attack... Ooh, if I attack, I actually pull the boys in battle. I can do this fight on this turn. That is dope -alicious. Yeah, I don't really see a need to go in this area with the rest of the army, so we might be better off just sending the Phantasm to start the battle. Uh, if you mouse over, um, the flags that are moving and shine are, are the ones that are going to be participating in the battle. Encountering the Hunters from Beyond. As you approach the creatures from the Astral Sea, their horrific nature becomes fully revealed. Haunting eyes gaze from disturbingly flowing limbs. An eerie quiet surrounds the monsters, while the air around them crackles with magically charged strokes. It is clear that the Astral Siphoner is striking fear into the hearts of your soldiers. What do you do? Fear someone or not, these monsters must die. So we will attack, but we're going to have discouraged attackers. All attacking units have a minus 10 morale until the end of the battle. Or we can set a bounty on the head of the Astral Siphoner. Uh, we're going to be using some money, but we're... We're going to have encouraged attackers, so all uh, units will have extra morale. Remind the troops of the grandeur and bravery of their forefathers. So we practically, instead of using gold, we use Imperium to um, deactivate the morale debuff. Uh, and channel your magic prowess to force the creatures back into the Astral Sea. It's a 60% chance of success. The monsters flee through an Astral Breach. The independent army will be removed from its location. The monsters evade your arcane grips and attack, and uh, we do have the discouraged effect, and we do lose one astral affinity per turn. Um, you've been addicted to Stardew Valley for the last couple of weeks. Sometimes old and basic is all you need. How old is Stardew Valley? Star Sector, for instance? Yeah, sure. I mean, Star Sector is still in early access, so technically it's not old. It's completely fucking new. Although it's been in early access for a few years now, though. Oh, do I, do I attempt that? Because that sounds fun. Yeah, let's attempt that. Let's see. Success. Although, I probably missed out on experience. I probably missed out on experience. 
The breach at the mana node hums like an arcane echo as the raw magic of the astral sea returns to resonate with its astral flows. The astral invaders have been repelled, leaving a haunting impression of the dangers lurking beyond Atla. Yet you can't shake off the feeling of having glimpsed something grand, a window opening up between worlds. Inspired by the moment, you feel empowered and capable of conjuring an object from the astral sea yourself. Anna receives 120 knowledge, instantly finishing the research on magic shields. And now we can summon an artifact, draw in a large mana crystal, or conjure a magical companion. Let's see. So, summon a... Oh, it actually shows me the result. I will summon a magical artifact, the item Locket of Channeling. The Locket of Channeling is granting me 10 combat casting points at the start of the battle. Nice. So practically an artificial uh, combat casting point increase. Uh, we just cast more combat spells, or capable of casting more combat spells, or more complex combat spells. Okay, uh, draw in a large mana crystal, which is going to give us 203 mana, but we're, we're doing good on mana. I don't think I need that right now. Or I conjure a gremlin unit, which is a tier 2 skirmisher unit. Oh, can I not, uh... Displacement. Upon sustaining damage, this unit teleports to a random location within two hexes. It has the ability behind you. Target sustains damage and turns 180 degrees. <laughs> Cannot be used when within a enemy zone of control. So it seems to be a weird... It's a fiend. Two fire resistance, minus four frost, minus four spirit. Desolate walking, immunity to burning. I wonder if it evolves. I don't think I'm going to be getting that. I think I'm going to take the locket. There we go. Locket is mine. And now we have more combat casting. I think I'm gonna move back towards. No, this is a dead end. I guess I could clear that area out. Yeah, yeah, let's go in that direction. There's a road there as well. Might as well. No level up though. We did not receive experience from that fight, which kind of sucks. Magic shield has now been received. What's next? Uh, what? Enchanted crew companion. Oh, right. This is the research that has been that has the, its uh, cost reduced. Because right now we have a in the uh, Empire development, we now have um, astral inspiration. So a new research skill is research. Uh, whenever a new research skill is research, the knowledge cost of another random skill is reduced by twenty percent. Twenty five percent. In this case, it's our. Uh, it's our baby Enchanted Crow companion, which is, uh, kind. I, I guess it's useful. Well, so we got Scroll of Attunement. Grants non-mystic units. Attunement Starblades, which increases damage dealt with when a spell is cast. So that could be useful for summoned units, right? We got a shield unit in the army and a fighter unit in the army that could benefit from this. Uh-huh. Oh, for stars uh for Stardew, uh yeah, it's a seven year old game. I guess that's a little bit on the old side. And magical awards? Minor race transformation. Inscribes magical awards onto the target race, granting two lightning resistance to fire and to frost. Oh, that sounds so good. I'm, I'm going to take uh, Enchanted Crow Companion because it's cheap, and I can just get it in one turn. But yeah, those two sound awesome. Both. Both sound great. Probably I'm, I'm, I would benefit much more from the Magical Awards right off the bat than from the uh, Attunement Scroll. But yeah, let's get the birds. Let's get the bird. bird There, another tier 32 knowledge. There's a watchtower over there. Sundrin's call. Hey, it's Sundrin from the from Age of Wonders 3? 
Ever since you arrived in the Valley of Wonders, lucid visions have appeared in your mind's eye. Now a purposeful, a purposeful looking elven lady comes into focus. Salutations, Enamru and Kahanan. I am Sundran of House Inyok. Yeah, she is Sundran from Age of Wonders 3. Is my PC staying cool? Yep, PC staying cool. Is it buzzing? Is it buzzing again? Should I reconnect the microphone? My people have regarded this valley throughout the ages. For better or for worse, its fate is connected to our own. We've been watching you for some time. Other powerful Godir have noticed your arrival, too. Your essence emanates conflict, but also great potential. I'm sorry, what? Okay. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Your essence emanates conflict, but also great potential. Listen to what I have to say, and you and your arcane tigrans may avoid meeting your end here. Uh, no. Age of Wonders 3 got you hot and bothered, just curious. I see. The Lost Tower. Clear the Tower of Destinies. The Pyromancer Yaka has broken free and returned to Atla. His gaze is set on the Valley of Wonders. He's building up his infernal strengths and will not tolerate competition, especially from a fledgling mage like you. You must embrace that sp the spark of magic that has awoken inside of you. Seek out the powers of the nearby Towers of Destiny before Yaka does. If you don't prepare, Yaka will burn your settlements to the ground. Sundran advises you to explore the nearby Towers of Destinies and use its power to ward off Yaka. We will gain a lot of mana and a mystery bonus. You have my gratitude, Sundran of House Inyok. Together we can take on even a Wizard King. Easy story path, you accept this quest. And we gain, um... Relation boost with Sundran. See ya, sub. Have a good one, man. Thanks for dropping by. Yes, we accept. So where is Sundran? Sundran of House Inyok. We have peace. She has uh, three... Order, I think, and nature. Three order and three nature. So she's half, uh... Half high elf, half druid, I guess. Can I get into diplomacy? No. Diplomatic overview. There. You have diplomacy. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Pondering the many allies and enemies I have in this realm, I'm glad that you seem to be one of the former. Let us try to bring our empire closer. Uh, negotiate. Negotiations are mutually beneficial agreements with fellow rulers. You can propose treaties to strengthen the bond between your empires. You can trade assets to make a profit, or you can send gifts to improve relations. Their assets are mana. My assets are resources and gifts. Wizard bond. Uh, both rulers agree to a wizard bond to improve empire relations and access new treaties and diplomatic states. Uh, effects of the throne city of each ruler will be revealed. The rulers can call each other to war. Yeah, let's go for a wizard bond. They ask for 150 gold. Ah, uh, let's wait on that then. Let's wait a bit. Pronouncement. I can make a declaration of friendship. Which is going to cost me 100 gold. Increase towards... Modify this little increases towards 300. Will be added to your relations with the ruler. Good. Maintaining a declaration cost, costs 10 gold per turn. Which increase... Which increases by 10 gold for each additional declaration. Okay. Uh, wait on that a bit. Did we see where she is? That's Oraculum. Guardian tree. No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where she is. Tower of Destinies. Okay. And there she is. Sundrin. Tower of Destinies. Uh, conduit. What did the wizard bond at 150 turn out cheaper than the bribe for 100? I guess so, but I wanted to see if I can utilize the gold somewhere else a little bit better. 
definitely that is the better choice on how to spend the gold. But I want to see, do I need to build anything inside the city yet, or how are we doing? I don't think I need to build the... to invest the gold in anything else for right now, so probably increasing relations with Sundran is a good idea. Okay, yeah, let's go for that. Ba -ba -ba, pronounce declaration of friendship. Okay. Please know that you consider me your friend, High Matriarch Enam, Enamru and Kahanan. I will remember this, and this will improve our relations in time. Good. Uh, cast another summon. Production stash. I think I need to get another city rocking soon. Where would that be? Let's activate uh, economy spell. Oh! Okay, that makes sense. Right here. Right here would be a great new city. And I can start getting those mana nodes in place. Eventually I can get the guardian tree going. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good location. A uh, city right here. If I can. Um, I wonder how much do I need for a city. Probably Imperium. Okay. Deactivate there. And turn. Unit enchantments are spells which allow you to empower your armies. They apply to all units with a specific role and cost upkeep for each unit affected. These enchantments often synergize with units or spells from the same tome. Correct, madam. Uh, what's up? Need 200 Imperium for a city? Cool. I'll start gathering that up now, then. Summon... Summon my boy. There. And Enchant Crow Companion. Close that. Enchant Crow Companion is going to be done in one turn, and it's going to cost me two. Two mana per units. Uh, okay, so that means uh, it practically increases the mana cost of all of my scouts. That's going to be six per turn. I can do that. Good. And what do we got in terms of research? Staves of Warding, Magical Wards, and Static Shields. Uh, that's perfect. I do want that. And I think I'm gonna go for that. I don't really want to upgrade my uh, support units, abilities, grand bolts of resistance. That's kind of cool. Hey, Shion. Have I ever played Deus Ex? Uh, yes. I played Deus Ex, uh, Mankind Divided and Human Revolution. Did not play the classic, though. I'll do magic wards. Good. Let's travel, build an outpost, we'll require 50, yeah, let's go there. There. Alright, move here. Pick up that node, an underground passage. What's that? A Phantasm Warriors with Spirit Hawks. Nice. Ethereal? Yep. Ethereal Farsight Low Maintenance Tier 1 unit. Got it. A lot of goodies over there. I, You know what? I think I'm just going to send this army further east. Uh, you guys are going to go over here to town. And you're going to start gathering up a, a second army. The extra city is going to be giving me a new hero, so that's cool. Um, probably wait. We'll just let it grow on its own. Human Revolution was really good. Man Guy Divided was a bit disappointing. I mean, I wish they would have went a little bit deeper into the story, rather... You know, make the story more interesting and not just talk about uh, racism between humans and... Uh, Enhanced with cybernetics people. 
I mean, yeah, sure. Yes, racist is bad. I, I get it. C can, can we have a more interesting story, please? 76 gold. Okay. Is my range... Why can't I see things in the fog? It's a bit weird. Archon blood. Okay, so the Archon blood is providing me with mana and 20 combat casting points. I'm probably just going to be building a, uh, out, a work camp over there. I'm not going to... I'm not going to build a city. Unless we have fish. We do have fish. Interesting. I'll think about it. Maybe we'll build a city later on. Uh, you are fine. Just stay here. You... Uh... Sundrin took the pickup, the resource pickup. There's an underground entrance over there. NPC army. Probably gonna go westwards a little bit. How difficult is the Tower of Destiny? Oh, one star? Oh, perfect. We're gonna clear that. Totally. It was cliche and the actual story went nowhere. Yep. Is a new Arcanist going? Yeah. Yeah, a new Arcanist will be created. Good stuff. Actually, should have kept one of the Phantasm Warriors in the main army, but I guess the Lesser Tight Spirit is just going to become a new attacker. Well, thinking about it, maybe just maybe, I should cancel this. Uh, refund any golden mana, however any production will be lost. That's not really a lot of production, sure. Cancel that. We're gonna take out one of the Arcanists from here and send it towards the main city. And we're gonna summon a new... Oh, we're going for the Enchanted Crow Companion? Uh, sure. And we're gonna summon another Phantasm Warrior. And that Phantasm Warrior will be in the main army, I'm thinking. Because we have too many ranged units, I need an extra melee unit in here, I guess. Confirm movement of who? There. Good, good, good. What the hell? Five stack. Oh, right, 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 right. Cool. Hopefully they make a third one and cap it off well. Maybe. Maybe. Someday they will. Okay, yes, that's an end turn. We're, we're trying to build up Imperium for a new city. We'll see how it's going to go. Your throne city has grown large enough for you to construct a wizard tower. This beacon of your power provides many bonuses, including valuable Imperium. Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's see. So in one turn, I'm going to be able to take uh, this location, the Tranquility Pool, which is going to be awesome. Let's see here. Yeah, we have a lot of new types of units. Spell Shield is now available. Looking kind of cool. Soothers are now available to research... What abilities do we got? Arcane Battlements. Unlocks arcane, unlocks arcane Amplifier in combat. Plus 5 Fortification Health. Okay. Um, arcane Institute. More knowledge. Archer Battlements. Blacksmith. Maltrope Stash. Granary. It's probably going to be the Shrine, isn't it? Wizard Tower Foundation. Extra range, Imperium. This is going to be... This would be boosted in what scenario? I'm not seeing a boost option. Special Province, Mystic Abbey. 
plus in mana income, plus three knowledge per adjacent conduit or research post. Nice. That's going to be useful. I With this, I can get these two. These two adjacent, and then they can produce some extra. Not much, but some. I technically... Yeah, I technically can reach this mana node as well. But they're not adjacent. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. If I build it here, wouldn't that mean... Yeah, if I build it here, wouldn't that wouldn't that switch this tile to a uh, research post tile? Let me let me see something. So Mystic Abbey must be built on an acquired province. Special province improvement counts as a conduit. Yes, knowledge per adjacent conduit or research post. I see. I can. Yes, if I get this location and uh, build a conduit or research post there, it's probably gonna be a yeah. Um, I can connect all of these four, and it's going to generate a extra 12? Yes! Mon dieu! It's glorious! Okay, yeah, that Mystic Abbey is going to be cool. Uh, let's get our hands on the shrine, I think, is going to be the way. Just to get some extra mana going. I'm not going to hurry production. It's fine. Uh, do I need an extra unit? We're gonna get, we're gonna get an extra hero soon. So there's three here. One unit gonna come gonna come over from here to reinforce this. It depends what that hero is gonna be. So it's either gonna be an extra phantasm warrior or an extra an extra phantasm warrior or a extra um, support unit. I, I guess it would be cool to try to make a melee hero, because we are eventually going to be gaining items f for melee dudes. So maybe trying to go for a magic warrior might, be, not, might not be so bad. Let's go to hero overview recruit. Hey, you can recruit. I know. Mirabel Mirabilis. Okay. Can I just call you Mimi? It might even be good. It might. Mirabella Mirabilis uh, would be a resistant duelist. When this unit attacks an enemy, it gains a stack of Volter resistance. Okay, so that can work as a uh, that can work as a tank, and she would have astral affinity and shadow affinity, so those would grow. Eugenio Mirabilis. He seems to be a caster. Materium Adept. Three Materium Affinity. When governing a city, the Empire gains plus three Materium Affinity. He has Materium Affinity, Astral Affinity, and Shadow. Is there anything in the Materium tree that we might need? Let me have a look-see. Also, Materium is the opposite of Astral, which is weird as fuck. Military Engineering. Um, cost, outpost costs less. Province Improvement, Extra Stability. Cities that share a border with a throne city gain 10% uh, income increase. Eh, not that interesting. What else do we got up in here? We got... Okay, there's a little bit of a FPS drop when I'm switching between uh, hero cards, so that's a bit weird. He's from Oraculum, Firebrand Predator. Firebrand Predators, I see. Um, let's see, B -b 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 Astral Affinity and Shadow Hero of the Meek. While Army Leader, while Army Leader, all Tier un uh, tier 1 units gain uh, 10 extra HP, plus 1 defense, plus 1 resistance. Okay, so that's kind of like a Horde ability, very Horde-focused character. Sago Stargazer, a tank, duelist, against heroes this unit. Oh, okay, so he has bonus uh, combat against... Um, enemy heroes, deals extra 50% damage, and he has three defense and three resistance against other heroes. Meh. Enrico the Puzzler, War Mage, magic attack to deal 10% extra damage, nice. 
and Morpho the Vanguard Recruiter. This governor city gains 30 plus, uh, plus 30 draft income. Yeah, I think from all of these, uh, Mirabelle sounds the most interesting. Yeah, I want to get rid of Mirabelle. Those eyes, though. Hopefully she'll stick around until I can recruit her. Which is going to be in a few turns. Uh, process will be complete. Good. I wonder if I need to be in the region for this to work. Well, it doesn't really matter because I don't longer have any movement points. Okay. Um, cast it. Okay, we will enchant all of our uh, scouts. Let's see if they get a crow companion. They do! Oh, wow! They get multiple crow companions. Ah, oh, that looks so cool! And that is a permanent aesthetic modifications on our scout. Nice. Okay, uh, can I get a summon Phantasm Warrior in one turn? Great. Well, what's the um, upkeep cost for Phantasm Warriors? Let me see. Might be going a little bit too... Um, I might be going a little bit too deep on the um, eight upkeep. Good. Good, good. It ain't that much. It ain't that hardcore. So yeah, that seems to be a melee character. So gaining an extra Arcanist or a support unit might be the way to go. I'm going to get an extra soother here. Good. Orders required. Oh, let me see if... No. We actually don't gain any extra vision. There's nothing else here. Okay, bringing this dude over on this side next. Uh, you stay here. You get to, you will go west once we have a new uh, hero. So wait here. Uh, you good, sir. I found some city ruins. Sl Slither's Den. Flotsam. Probably need to take those. I'll take this as well. There. I'll take that. This is a dead end. Yeah, no point in going in that direction anymore. I'm gonna go back here and take this uh, Astral Echo. And let's see. I think I'm gonna end the turn here. I uh, wonder if my wife is still watching the stream, because I would would kindly ask her for uh, some some water. No, she doesn't. If she's not, I'm probably just going to take a quick break and go grab some water. Alright, so, uh, Magical Ward is still increasing. Summon Phantasm Warrior is still increasing. I mean, it's going to be cast next turn. Uh, how's this looking? Allegiance is going up. Our Pact of Loyalty is going to go up to two, in two turns. Priest City shared its vision. Allows buildings on claimed provinces. Contributes to the rallies uh, of the lieges. Will reinforce in combat. Good. And the turn. Clear the tower. Yeah, spell ready to summon. Let's go ahead and cast that. I keep on forgetting that it's right click, not left click. We're going to be attacking eastwards. To be clearing out this entire area. And these guys. Okay, so we got an outpost over here. I can build it into a work camp. So, what does this do? Build a work camp at the southwest. Work camps allow for the annexation of a single province to the outpost. If a city is founded from the south, will start with one additional population and the annexed province already attached. Okay. That's kind of fucking with me. Can I get this? Does my wife still post on her channel? Yeah. Yeah, she does. 
I don't I don't know if I can annex this. Would it be too close to the outpost? Would it cause trouble? One, two, three. I should be able to get it. Hmm. Yeah, I can't really hydrate right now, Nikolov, because I ran out of uh, liquids. I'll need to get some. I'll probably go and grab some right now. I'll be right back. Again. There. Ah, that was refreshing. Okay, so, 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 so. The outpost might have not have been a, the best idea over there. Should have, maybe, installed it a little bit further to the east, but I can't expand this city to the east, and it is, in theory, gonna annex the Guardian Tree eventually. So that's acceptable. Those are acceptable conditions. Uh, let's check the costs. So, found a city, we need 200, uh, which is going to be received in two turns. I can create a work camp. I can create palisade walls. Uh, so, build palisade walls in the south of Mexico, additional 20 fortification health. Hmm. Is there anything that I would like to annex? I mean, it would probably be the Guardian Tree, but I need to clear that place. Too much. Oh, I can annex this in the east, and it's a Focus Crystal. When annexed, it would give me 10 gold and 10 knowledge. And also, a global effect. Units would gain 10% extra ex uh, experience. Yeah! I like that. Alright, yeah, we're gonna be uh, building a work camp. Sending this guy to the east to clear the area. Um, okay. Outpost founded. Outpost province. Cool. This guy needs to go here. Uh, you intercept with the main army. Shrine's gonna be done in one turn. What the hell? Oh my god, it needs two? And if I were to utilize this... Seriously? If I were to utilize this, uh... I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> 15 Imperium for two food? That's very annoying. Um... I guess it's fine. I can pay that. So practically in one turn it would be Let's let's do some math. I guess I guess we we got to we got to do that math. Uh so in one turn it would be 177 with another 40 it would be 217. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would be barely barely there. All right, I'm actually going to build a conduit here instead of a research post because I think we need a little bit of extra mana. Just a bit of mana, and plus it's conduit research. It's it's research post and and conduit, so that's great. Okay, and now we gain the tranquility pool, which is giving us two, uh, two, 20 extra knowledge and research is going to be faster now. And now we have the Tranquility Pool. We just need to add the Archon Blood and the Astral Dew, and we're going to be gaining the 
Cosmo Cosmo Flux Elixir. Which is gonna be cool. Right, uh, the next thing for this city will be to take this area, which is gonna be a forester, and then we're gonna take that mana node. And then this forester will be turned into a um, myst mystic abbey. I think that's gonna be the idea. Good. Herculity pool acquired. Uh, go there. And that's it. I don't think I'm gonna be summoning a next another unit, that's fine. You are not in range, not in range. Can you reach? You can reach, and it would be an attack, but I'll just go with a with a full army next turn. Outpost gonna be upgraded into cities, no shit. End turn. Negotiation successful. Friendship with you has been declared. Okay, uh, what's my kind of a relation with you? Um, 365 Empire Relations. We are currently at peace. They still, they're still asking me for gold, so I guess I'm gonna wait a little bit further. That's fine. Can I send these guys east? They should be able to clear out these units without dying, hopefully. Big if. Nice. Ah, oh, right, that, actually, that location is actually defended, that's annoying. Uh, Pact of Loyalty, Free City shares its vision, contributes to Rally of Lieges, good. So now we've unlocked the Rally of Lieges. Rally of the Lieges overview. Here, you can rally armies from your vassals and conquered ancient wonders. The amount of units you can rally is determined by how many vassals and ancient wonders you own. Right. We sadly don't have any vassals nor nor any ancient wonders, so we can't muster the Le Le the Legi boys. That's acceptable. New Empire skill available. What do we got? Adaptive research. Locking and shuffling research. Okay, research city structures cost 50% less. I don't think I will. What's this? Excavation might be useful for the underground. Although, as I understand, the underground is not really that big. Ain't that high of a priority. Let's take that. Ooh, 71 gold and 79 production. Awesome. That'll pay the bills. We have too many scouts in this area. Uh, you'll take this and this and then you're gonna go southeast. While this boy will start exploring the coastline. Double Door Sanctum produces shrine. Okay. Does it have some saved up production? I can't tell. I think it does. Alright, what do we got up in here? Arcane Battlements, Arcane Institute, Archer, Blacksmith Granary, Mana Obelisk. Would give us 50 mana per turn. It's not boosted. We would need two quarries for that. I don't really have a good location for quarries. Maybe, maybe over here in the west, but that's a bit off. So Conjure Tavern. You know what? Give me, give me a vendor. Give me the vendor. That's fine. That's acceptable. Okay, you get that. Race transformations are costly, but mm -hmm. I know, I know. So most likely that uh, tipped us over, and we now can uh, research race transformation. Uh, go here. Yeah, it's an enemy. I'm just gonna go southwest. 
yeah, magical wards have been researched. You have acquired enough arcane scales to choose a new. Mm hmm. So we need to choose a new tome. Let's see the tome library. All available tomes. So these are all that we can get. Well, I should be able to check all tomes and uh, order them via tier. And then we can check further down on what do we want to focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Tome of Cryomancy. It would give us... Oh, it's a, it's a shadow tome, so it would be giving us one extra shadow affinity. Oh no, two shadow affinity. Uh, School of Cryomancy and Frost Weapons. So let's see. Uh, there. School of Cryomancy. Uh, special Province Improvement, plus 10 Knowledge, plus 3 Mana per adjacent Snow or Ice Province, and counts as a research post. Sadly, we don't have any Snow or Ice. Frost Weapons. Uh, base melee and physical range attacks gain plus 4 Frost Damage and minus 2 Physical Damage. And we would do 20% damage against frozen units. Frost Arrows. Uh, makes base physical range attacks do extra frost damage. Only skirmishery and range units would be affected. We don't have any of those. We're practically focusing on summoned units and melee. So this might not be the way to go. And maybe support units. Uh, all units sustain damage. Ice coffin damage. Summon lesser snow spirit, which can evolve into bigger snow spirit, I guess. White witch. Access to the battle mage. Inflicts frozen. Uh, so frost bolts and freezing blast. Uh, unleashes a magical bolt at the target enemy. Freezing blast would be the frozen chance attack. Got it? Okay, interesting. And then this could further evolve into some extra shadow stuff. Got it. Okay, Tome of Enchantment. Nope, it's a... I'm not going to be looking through the ones that are not of my affinity for right now. Although there are some that are worth checking out. For example, Tome of... I think it's Wind. But it's fine. Okay, Enchantment. Okay, Horde. Nope. Tome of Pyromancy, Someday, Rock, Zeal, Faith. I, I do want to check out the Tome of Roots, Entwined Thrall, it would give us Herbalist and Poison Weapons, Social Province, plus 5 food, plus 5 mana, uh, Per adjacent province with forests or swamps. Uh, there's quite a few forests around. And they would regenerate extra mana. Poison weapons, everybody does for blight damage with melee and physical ranged. Or poison arrows. Physical ranged. Summon entwined thrall. Poisonous and plant like creature. Skirmisher unit, poison and needle and melee strike. Poison needle is a ranged four. X's attack that does a chance of poison damage. Poison blades, healing roots. Heal 10 HP and two regen. Vine prison. Summon five living vine units randomly in a two hex radius, which live for three turns. These don't deal damage, but have a chance to immobilize enemies. I think this book would be worth it just for that. Interesting. I wonder if the enemies can actually walk through them. Because if they can't, unless they have walk through or face through or something like that, uh, you could kite the enemy indefinitely with a spell. Nice. Tome of Beasts. Uh, someone will want to whisper. Old speaker. Tome of Evocation. There we go. It's either be probably going to be Tome of, Voc of Vocation or to uh, Tome of Souls. The Tome of Vocation, Lightning Focus. Base magic attacks deal 2% lightning damage and a chance to electrify. Cool. 
Fulmination. Enemy units in a 1 hex radius sustain 15 lightning damage and chance to become electrified. Lightning blades, lightning torrent. All units sustain 20 lightning damage. I guess we could just focus on this. Evoker. Offensive chain lightning magic? Holy moly, yes. Summon lesser storm spirit. And what else do we get? Channeling tower. Plus 10 mana, plus 3 mana per adjacent conduit. And it counts as a conduit. Okay. And lightning weapons. Yeah, this sounds good. This sounds very good. So it's probably going to be a vocation. We already had a warding. What's the Tome of Souls? Harvest souls from your enemies and create undead creatures. Specialize in expendable units and starting your soul economy. It's going to give us soul harvest. Soul collector. We would be able to inflict soul bound. Soul fire. Target enemy unit sustains 10 frost and fire damage. Enemy units and target army gain soul bound until the next time they're in battle. Bone golem. Fence rice allow the creation of Bone Golem. Uh, these can be created in a city by using souls or by fusing two skeleton units. Shock Troop Undead Tier 2. Consume Corpse. Soul Overflow. Probably units in a 1 hex radius gain 1 strengthen and 20 maximum HP. Soul Binder. Nice, but I feel like we're already rolling with some good stuff, and it may, I think Tome of Evocation is just going to be helping a little bit further on that. Um, Fertility, Nature Tier 2, Tome of Winds, Artificing, Glades, Tome of Amplification, Chain Lining, Astral Blood, Amplifying Mind, so practically work more towards Astral Affinity. Tome of Scrying, Summon Watcher, ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Tome of Necromancy is Tier 2. Cold Dark, interesting. Uh, Balancero87, thank you for becoming a follower, welcome to Hit Point In. Veil of Darkness. Summon Snow Spirit, Flash Freeze. So practically this is a upgrade to uh, the Tome of Cryomancy. Marching Winter, what's Marching Winter? Target Friendly City starts altering terrain to Arctic at two provinces per turn. The spell extends up to two provinces outside the domain. While the spell is active, province with snow and ice provide plus two food and plus two production income. Oh, that's kind of cool. Tome of Amplification, Tome of Scrying. Bacon. Tome of the Doom Herald. Banshee, Despair, Cruel Weapons. Tome of Necromancy. Cycles, Cold Dark, Tome of Vigor. Oh, Tome of Teleportation, Mass Recall Emergency Teleportation Phasing. Summon Phase Beast. Tome of Summoning, this is what we want. Oh yeah. That's our baby. That's what we need. Great Transformation. Pandemonium. There, there's a few. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, There's 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 a few. What's the tier 5 stuff? Probably the Tome of Archmage. Is there one associated with Shadow? Eternal Lord. Withering Mist, Raise Undead Army, True Death Magic, Battlefield Reanimation. Nice. Astral Travel, Cosmic Overdrive, Type Stop. Oh, that sounds so awesome. This really gives me a D&D &D vibe. The entire way of progression really gives me a D&D &D vibe. In the sense that uh, uh, the way e heroes have stories and how the quests are phrased and how the names of the spells are are shaped. It's, it's cool. All the shit they came up with for this game. Actually, they reused a lot of stuff from Age of Wonders 3, Redux. 
they they've been playing a lot of D&D and they reuse a lot of stuff from Age of Wonders 3. It is easy to lose yourself in this game. It is, yeah. But we'll take it one step at a time. I think I'm going to be getting Tome of Evocation and we're going to we're going to really uh bunker down on Astral Affinity. I might be adding some extra shadow, but Astral Affinity is going to be the way to go for now. Well, let's go. Just as you may effectively utilize the protective potential of magic, it follows that you can employ it in a more devastating fashion in order to visit harm onto your foes. The thunder and the fury of the skies is at your disposal if you prove yourself worthy. Its tempestuous, destructive force is a perfect tool for blasting apart your enemies. Larissa Mirabilis, Sorcerers of the Commonwealth. Cool. Okay, let's see, what are we researching? Fulmination, Lightning Blades, or Summon Lesser Storm Spirit. I don't think I'm going to be summoning anything else right now. Uh, let's see, Fulmination. Enemy, enemy units in a 1 hex radius sustain 15 lightning damage and have a 60% chance of becoming electrified. Uh, lightning Blades also sounds awesome, where we just enhance our weapons. But we'll go for fulmination because that one is cheap and it's gonna give us it's gonna give it to us in one turn. Also, we have magical wards. Minor race transformation. Does this have a ma uh, a mana upkeep? Oh, hello. What's up, phone? Nay, denied. Magical words does sound good. And it doesn't seem to have a mana up eep. A uh, cancel in two turns. Okay. Acceptable conditions. Fine. We can start this battle. That's going to be a bigger boy battle. Let's see how we do. Yeah, let's try auto combat. Hey, nobody dies. I don't think I could have done a better job myself. I might just take it. Mhm. Mm yeah, I'll take I'll take that one. Battle has been won. I guess I can check out what's in that underground passage real quick. Not enough movement points. This is the yeah, it is the indeed of the underground. I'm not seeing shit down there. Probably gonna attack in the northwest to clear this area out, and then I'll go to the underground. Uh, Noble Sector has produced the vendor. Great. Looking good. Um, next turn, I'm gonna be able to make this into a city. Ah, uh, Suitsayer's gonna be a while until I can hurry that production by 158. If I would be a bank money maker, that could be doable. Okay, what do we got? Arcane Battlements, Arcane Institute, Blacksmith Caltrope, Granary, Mana Obelisk, Market, Stone Conjurer, would give us mana and plus 10 production. Early saving on 43. Um, that might be useful because it could shave off several turns off of the buildings. It does need two farms though for it to be boosted. Ooh, right, Channeling Tower, what's this? Uh, plus one mana, plus three mana per adjacent conduit. I can, in theory, build it here, and I would have several conduits attached to it. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. Produce merchandise now. Town Hall is going to bring out the Spellbreakers. Wizard Tower Foundation. One turn? Sure. Let's go for that one turn. Wizard Tower Foundation. 
you know what? I'll, I'll start moving these guys west. Or maybe I'm going to hurry production next turn. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll make them wait one more turn. Do No, we're going to be activating the Magical Awards in uh, two turns. And next turn, I should have enough Imperium to uh, transform that outpost into a city. Over here, how are you guys doing? Fine. Enter. You have just gained or caused a grievance against another ruler. Where? Fire and Sand, Unique Pantheon Quest, Yaka defeated. From within the smoke of a burning cloud, a regal figure reveals itself to you. Rejoice, mortal! You have been deemed worthy of gazing at the aspect of the truly sublime Yaka. You may now surrender your people and temples to the God of Fire in reverential adoration. Or watch them burn in retribution for a foolish mistake. Will you resist the demanding gripe of Yaka? We're not scared of your fear allegiance, mother effer. Come face our steel. Oh, we're directly at war? Jesus Christ, okay. Where is he? Is that Yaka? No. I don't know where Yaka is. Hey, there's Yaka. A soother. Got it. You, I was insulted. Ha! You may be the rising star now, but it won't last. Sooner or later, my empire will rise above all. Alright, dick cheese. Tower has been built. Fulmination has been researched. What's next? Lightning Torrent. Target enemy army, all sustain 20 lightning damage, and all suffer minus 2 lightning resistance for one world map turn. This is a enemy army spell, so you just cast it before battle to weaken your enemy. And I will go for it. We're gonna become the magical boys in a turn. Let's move you to the south. You're just gonna go down the coast. You take this, 71 gold, take that, another 71, and some bark and we'll move. Okay, you, what's the rage on this guy? Uh, you shouldn't be able to reach me if I go down the path. Oh, fuck. Well, he will. A phoenix. Ooh, doesn't he have a, a few too many dudes already? Oh boy. Well, that's quite a bigger threat right off the bat. Looks really similar to civilizations? Yeah, it is. That is quite similar to civilizations, even that of the Hex. I need to intercept that, that army. That phoenix might have undying as well. Also, I need to heal up. Uh, this is going to be done in one turn. So I need to wait an extra turn. Great. Stick around there, I guess. We're just going to wait. Could hurry that production. Do I? Hmm. City stability is currently five. I don't think I need to waste up the money right now. Although I could run westwards. Okay, hurry production. There. Uh, that's gonna generate food. It's fine. These guys are going to move westwards. They don't know where my capital is yet. Really? The leader? That's the soother? Cool. Produced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Alright. Let's see. Arcane. Tavern. 
to gain a 20 city stability, but we would need an extra farm. Wizard Tower for extra Imperium. Crypt. Channel. Okay, let's go with the Arcane Institute because that's boosted. With you guys, I would really need to heal. Tier 2, Poison Spores. I'm risking it. Okay, yeah, let's go back. Let's go back to friendly territory and heal up a bit. There we go. That scout might die. There are many paths to victory in this realm, but they all need the right strategy. You can expand your empire far and wide to become the dominant power within the realm. Use magic to bend the very land to your will, or use force. Okay, I need to track a victory condition. Ah, uh, sure. Quests, magic. There. Good. And now I can detrack it because I don't care about it right now. There. Spell. Magic warding is ready to cast. Let's transform our boys. Nice. We are now energized. Have higher resistance. So now, all of our units have lightning effects going on them. Which is awesome. Oh wow, including the phantasms. That's cool. Okay, so you can get something. Uh, get... This region over here. Do we need mana or research? Well, if I if I get uh, the research post, I would be getting. Wait, why is it fifteen? Ah, oh, the focus crystal. Right. The energize I hydrate. Indeed. I'm already going to be gaining 10 um, re uh, knowledge from the Focus Crystal, so I think I'm going to go for the uh, Conduit. There we go. Exactly, it's now 107. That should be shaving off some turns off research. I don't think I want to summon anything else for right now. Focus Crystal has been acquired, so that is now giving us a 10% experience globally. I don't think of those stack. Would be overpowered if they did. Uh, Empire upgrade. This will now become a city. Is there anything I can get? No, with 47 I can't get shish. Let's see you guys. Two turns requires 45. I can gain four. Plus five per turn. Yeah, I could shave off one turn off the pact. And yeah, we would gain a pact of vassalage. It would share its income and magic materials. Other empires may no longer negotiate better diplomatic stats. Uh, they will join their overlord in any war they're fighting and can assist them combat. And I'm going to be able to start recruiting their units. That's going to be great. Uh, town selection, that's fine. And wizard tower, that's fine. Good. Nice, nice. So it seems the, yeah, the capital is all the way over there on the other side. We'll need to reinforce this area by a lot. Uh, when is going to be the next... Population increase. Okay. So that's going to be... Probably going to be grabbing this area. Probably. We'll see. That's either way going to turn into a uh, conduit. Okay, you guys are now healing up. So I'm going to move you east. 
and you'll sit within the borders so you can heal up. That is giving you an increased uh, amount of HP regen, right? Yeah, yeah. Friendly Domain, 25. They should be healed up in around two turns fully, which is okay. Uh, you boys... have a decent army strength. You should be able to take that out, so we're gonna send you west. You get to go south. You get to go south words as well. And you... I'm not sure where you get to go, my good sir. Enemies over in the south. Arculum. What's a relation? Ah, uh, they have a better allegiance with, uh, with Yaka. That sucks a bit. Maybe I can get get there a little bit faster. We'll see. So that is. I'm within Oraculum's territory. I need to get out of here. Let's go westwards. Good. 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 What's going on in the main city? Currently building the Arcane Institute. Generate a food. Do I need extra soldiers? I am generating 75 gold per turn. Might not be such a bad idea to get us... Start working on it towards a spell shield. Yeah. Not really. We don't really have that much draft. But yeah, eventually we're going to get a spell shield, so that's cool. Does this provide me with anything? Oh yeah, they grant knowledge and mana on pickup. And anything else? Once I build the special building, probably. Ready to turn. Mending the Schism, Aftermath. The newly forged pact with Astrolonium seals the reunification of the Arcane Tigrans. We were fools to fear the magic you're wielding, uh, Mirabilis says. A spell can harm or kill, but it can also protect. We Arcane Tigrans need your powers to survive in this dangerous world, and will proudly call you our High Matriarch. Astrolonium offers all it has to give so that the Arcane Tigrans may once more stand together. All cities of the T Arcane Tigrans of your empire gain 32 city stability for 6 turns. All free cities of the Arcane Tigrans gain 300 relations with you for the next 18 turns. We can muster their finest soldiers for war, and we'd gain a, a spellbreaker. The people at Nebular Sanctum deserve a feast in honor of this occasion. That's going to give us plus 5 alignment, and we will receive 254 food, which is going to gain us one extra population, which is not bad. Or we could donate to my treasury and we'll prosper together. Really need the extra money. I could because of, because I saw that that phoenix. I feel like I could use the uh, the spellbreaker. Hmm. Yeah, let's get the spellbreaker. It's ya boy. The the Khajiit has wares. If you have coined. Message received. Pondering the many allies and I... Okay, she's ready to discuss other shit. Got it. Wizard Bond? It's a deal. Defensive Pact. Too soon to try again in three days. Okay. Oh, actually something that I forgot to do with Astrolonium is I forgot to trade. And... Uh, I would pay 5 mana, and they would give me 10 draft. Ah, that's kind of meh. I don't want that. Withdraw Whispering Stone. Pause ongoing negotiations. Oh, I still need to get bonded vassalage and stuff like that. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, what do I get in uh, the rally? That's, that's only going to happen in the next few turns. I guess I could go and reinforce that army to the west. City's gonna be done in two turns. 
These guys are almost healed up, but I think they're fine enough so they can fight. I can attack these guys. Okay, let me see what they do. So they're tier two. They have poisonous spores. It seems we gotta rush them a bit. Healing roots. Seems if you consider trying Star Citizen, it seems like my kind of game. Ah, uh, no. I'm waiting for it to exit out of development hell. If we receive a full release of Star Citizen, I might touch it. Depending on reviews, of course. I'm not giving them any money. Slow, really slow. Um, auto combat? Hey, and nobody died. Great. And we gain a gets production and a heavy crossbow. Uh, Super G, thank you for becoming a subscriber. Really appreciate it. Thank you for giving me your Twitch Prime. Take the reward. Go back, and then we're gonna clear the pastures. Negotiation successful. Proceed. Ruler has leveled up. Great. Also received a. Uh, a new weapon, heavy crossbow, tier two, shoot crossbow, fire, fire range projectile. There has been a rocky, but it's going somewhere now. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Piercing ignores it up to five defense. Wow. An answer to uh, physical stackers. And also gives a quick stab. Maybe on the new hero, we'll see, but not on my current lord. Archery fighting landing sprint. Attunement Star Blades. Channel Power. Resistance. Distant Evocation. We would gain extra range. Fire Evoker. Magecraft. Hmm. It's probably going to be this in Evocation. And that's going to force the enemies to come to us. There. That sounds awesome. Uh, how are you doing on your level up path? Currently a veteran. Ah, uh, still needs to be a liege, and then after a liege, still needs to become a champion to evolve into a tight spirit. It's taking a sweet time, I'm not gonna lie. Hello, Johan Royal. Is this game more easier comparing to the last game? Because, oh boy, last game was so complicated. Um, the tutorials are pretty good. You can get the hang of it. Is it a magic tiger stream? It is. It is indeed a magic tiger stream. Okay, let's test out uh, this battle without a hero leading it. We're gonna go, we're gonna do manual. Uh, this is also a test to see if I can cast uh, spells from a distance. The doggos be marching. So is this practically a location where we have a debuff? Yes. Water. Units passing through water become wet. All units spend extra movement points when traversing the hex and have their charge... Charge blocked? One sec. Summon too many dwarven dwarves before release. Yeah, I was thinking not to go down the dwarf or the high elf route. Was thinking of trying something else. Plus, the story scenario uh, said that it has a lot of mana nodes, so a spellcaster-focused character sounded like the right idea. We will... This is a shield unit. No oh, shit. Frontline melee fighter. When entering defense mode, it grants a bonus to adjacent allies, protecting them against physical attacks. Indeed. Uh, do these things have, um, overwhelm or something like that? Low maintenance pack hunter melee attack deal twenty percent damage per friendly adjacent unit with pack hunter, so they can stack. Good desolate walk fiend. What does the fiend have? Minus frost, minus spirit. And they have fire resistance. They are of magical origin. What's this? Low foliage obscuring. So I think we're going to be harder to hit. Is what I'm thinking. Defense mode shield wall. So what does obscured mean? Let's see. 
Oh, it doesn't say? How about if I mouse over obscuring? Gained obscured. When a target is obscured, it becomes 40% harder to hit with ranged attacks. They only don't have, they don't really have ranged attacks, so that's acceptable. Uh, we could go here. There. Arcanist is going to be behind. Yeah, personally got you some dark necro human since it's been a long time since he had a chance to play Necromancer. Uh, I'm not in the mood for Edge right now, but yeah, yeah, Necromancer could have been good as well. Not in the mood for Edge right now, but understandable, good sir. Probably going to try to go for flank in theory. What Edge? Uh, you know, edginess. Um... Edge Lord um, being a bit dark for the sake of being dark. It's fine. It was a joke. Don't don't need to worry. It's fine. You don't have to worry about it. It's a saying. It's a pop culture thing. There, there, and in turn. Are they avoiding the water? I wonder. Oh, these guys can actually reach here. That's a bit annoying. And attack. Need to move forward by one. Cacti sharp. Will be inflicted with bleeding. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to have old-timey farm equipment? No worries, dude. Yeah, go for it. You enjoy the video game as you see fit, good sir. As you see fit. That is the way. Okay? That is the way. I'm actually going to step the Arcanist back. There we go. Keep them in position. Keep them in position. They're going to be coming in. Uh, do I need to go for Soothing Breeze? Nope. Let them come. Hey, I can launch spells, and they don't cost. Nice. They don't cost shit. Sustain, 15 lightning damage in a one hex radius. Magic Ablation for 30, but they have fire resistance, so they're not really that good. Magic Shield would give bolstering resistance. They both can reach this guy, but it should be fine. I'm actually going to go Fulmination on their butts. Nice, so that's give, it's starting to give us Star Blades. Oh, you guys can't receive Star Blades? Aww. Well, you can once I learn uh, a certain type of spell. Okay, they went through the Cacti and now they're bleeding. I see, so they only have one, uh, they only have one, uh, whatchamacallit. Wait, are we burning? Uh, no, I don't think so. On fire. Units passing through or ending their turn on this hex will be inflicted with burning. Has a chance of spreading to nearby flammable obstacles. Gee, okay. That's cool. I could set up a bark and infernal ability on him. I could just shoot. Okay, let's go cosmic ablation. What am I looking at? Looking at decent damage. Go for it. That's giving us more star blades. Let's do it. 19. 50% chance to hit. Could heal that dude. I really want him to stop on that position. Might want to move, scooch him to the left, but we are going to get an attack of opportunity. I could... Well, we could just try to spam the attacks. Let's go. Good. Good. And one more shot. Ah, that was a full miss. How far am I into the tomes? I just have the first two tier... I have two tier one tomes. I have invocation and warding. percent chance. Oh, that's a kill. Let's go there. Alright. Now, we want full shots 
this side. Good hits. And then you, we walk you here to high foliage and shoot in the back because that's a 90% chance. Good. And then you guys just attack. Got him. Hopefully I don't get burning at the end of the turn. Good. I don't. Victory with just one hit on the Phantasm Warrior. We received some level ups. It was a good fight. And gained a lot of food. Now that is a little bit more of a worrisome fight. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to be facing these guys. 64 HP on each one. Damn. Well, probably with magic, but at least I confirmed that I can utilize magic at normal mana costs, even if the heroes are not present within the um, stack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for our big boy over here to join forces with this stack, and uh, the then the big boy will be replaced by the hero, and the hero is going to go with the main army. I think that's going to be the idea. And we can annex another region. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Then your agenus goes over to Tomet. It's okay. Uh, how far are you into the tomes, my dude? Farm. Forester. I think I benefit a lot from having an extra farm which could be one to the west. Uh, but I also want to get this rolling, so... Bam. No, no, that would be the Forester. It would not be adjacent to this. Okay. This is the location where, what, that I need to grab. Okay, give me a farm there. Started playing with other streamers and he ended right now, but at the moment he got to uh, the third tier of Magic Tomes. All right, cool, cool, dude. Cool, cool. Produce an Arcane Institute because that got boosted. Mm -hmm. Seven turns or I'm gonna be having that location. You sold this game three hours ago and still did not start playing it. You're watching the stream. All right, Balancero. You have all the time in the world now that it's released. An act in Academy. Requires one research post. Build two warriors and one forester. Um, sadly, I'm not really familiar with Korean, so I can't really pronounce your name. Thank you for becoming a follower. Welcome to Hit Point Inn. Stone Conjurer has been boosted. Yeah, I want the Stone Conjurer now. Uh, is it worth me going for the Mystic Abbey? Plus three knowledge per adjacent conduit or research post. Not yet. But here it would be great. And then here would be the other one. Okay, uh, da, 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 plus three, plus three mana. Okay, so I probably need to decide which one is going to be um, providing with more knowledge and which one's going to provide it with more mana. It's probably, I'm probably going to go for more knowledge. So the Mystic Abbey is going to be built over here on the farm. Um, but not yet. Let's go for the Stone Conjurer because that's going to be providing us with uh, extra production, which is going to be shaving off one turn off of most buildings. And I think it's also boosted, so all's good. Uh, Mr. Scout, Mr. Scout, you good? Let's see. Do I have, um... Do I have open borders with you? No. But I do now. 
make Wizard Close Border Province Claiming Pact. Not yet. But now that we have open borders, I can move through her territory and explore a little bit further. So let's go. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, it's a coastal location. That's kind of interesting. Oh, no, no, no. Abort. I don't want to attack. Okay, so I see. Uh, even standing next to a hex of the city is considered to be a hostile blah blah. Just gonna move east a little bit. Ogre Keep. One star. Cool. Uh, you need to travel a little bit southeast, see if there's anything else in the water. Nothing. Oh, there's that. So I'm probably going to be going in and getting that. And with you... Trying to f travel a bit further south. We'll see what's over there in that direction. Uh, you guys get to wait, so we'll just move a little bit further back and try to meet with the uh, Spellbreaker. Okay, uh, do I need to cast anything? Summon Phantasm Warrior? Not yet. We'll wait a little bit. I don't really have... I mean, I guess I can always just have a Satellite Phantasm Warrior. But I'll wait a little bit on it. This is going to be done in two turns. And... That's going to be it for today, guys. A really enjoyable game. I think I could play this the entirety of the night, but that's enough. I'm starting to get tired and I am hungry. Uh, so that's going to be it for today. I'm just going to name this Scream. There. And we will continue tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to continue exactly where we left off. Hope you enjoyed. If you guys like what I do, please hit that follow button. It's going to notify you when I stream. If you want to further support me, also subscribe. If you're on YouTube, I have multiple guides and playthroughs that you guys can check out. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Helps with the YouTube algorithm. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.